Nice. Marker. Hollywood. <laughs> Let's go, bro. Let's go. Welcome to Hollywood. Welcome to the Hollywood Podcast, where we break down all the do's and don'ts of the celebrities you know who's. You know what I'm saying? Did you see that Leonardo DiCaprio was at uh, the uh, Rams game? Get out of town. I'm in town, baby. Dude, they should have a celebrity booth in uh, the SoFi Stadium. If you're a celebrity, you get to go to the special celebrity area. Have you ever seen that? Uh, I, I just saw this like last night for the first time, and I think it might have been new. It's at a UFC fight. They were show, <clears throat> showing all the NFL players and celebrities in the... <clears throat> <clears throat> in the in attendance, are you choking up just telling the story? <laughs> yeah, it just gets really sad. <laughs> the celebrities. Um, so they're showing all the celebrities, and they show Miles Garrett, and they're like Miles Garrett, number one overall pick, whatever year, and Baker Mayfield sitting right next to them, and he, they just act like he's not even there. Wow. <laughs> but uh, Baker's got the commercials, so yeah, but not the touchdowns. Ooh. Welcome to another rendition of Valor Coffee Sports Sometimes podcast. Coffee Sports Sometimes. Coffee Sports. Uh, I was watching the Chiefs Bengals game, and you know how I was in a Taco Mac, and they have. <laughs> <laughs> of course you were. I don't have a TV. I, you know, I got to go watch the game. Um, it's like the cinema of sports. Say? Taco Mac is the cinema of sports. Oh, like the movie theaters of sports? I call it cinema. Yeah, because you're a film buff. I'm a film guy. Yeah. Um, a filmy, is that what they say? Yes, we say that. Total filmy. Um, at Taco Mac, and they have like 30 TVs, and it's showing the Chiefs, the star quarterback, Patrick Mahomes, um, doing his thing. And on the other TVs, it's just commercials of State Farm with Patrick Mahomes on the commercials. And I'm like, that's crazy. There's just this person. You can be a sports star, but then you turn into a, a celebrity, start getting commercial deals. The man's everywhere. You're everywhere, except yeah. the Super Bowl. Head and shoulders commercials, too. Yeah. Troy Palomalu, now Patrick Mahomes. Well, let's, let's cut the sports crap. You know, we don't want to done. It, well, you know, congratulations to Who Day Nation and uh, the Bengals. I'm going to grab some water real quick. Please. Um, yeah, big congrats to the Bengals for making the Super Bowl. We're excited to watch them play. Are you going to watch the Pro Bowl? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I'm not. You big Pro Bowl guy? No, I'll probably watch the, the highlights, the recap video, just catch the big plays. Sure. But cool. I, I think I watched it one year and I just regretted it. I was like, yeah. this was a waste of time. I think they also, it's like a whole day event, too, of like different uh, games. Right. Different it, challenges. It feeds that celebrity uh, concept pretty well for the NFL. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, can you imagine football players from the, the 60s having the same level of stardom that they do today? I mean, can you imagine? I can only imagine. What the Yeah, I don't, like? uh, I don't, at what point did, uh, like, Patrick Mahomes take over as the face? Just his, his Super Bowl year? I think the Super Bowl, they, didn't they lose first? No, they won and then they lost. Who'd they beat? Rams? Who's to say? I always struggle with this. Who's to say? You always, uh, huh. History is written by the victor, so we only remember the winners. Except if you're an Atlanta Falcons fan, you remember the Falcons losing. 28-3. I was there. Crazy comeback by the Bengals, though, 21-3. to I wonder what the vent... Oh, wait. It was the Rams? Who was it? Nope. Mm, 49ers. Niners. Jimmy G. No... No way. Are you serious? Really? Yeah. Jimmy G has been in the Super Bowl? That was the year I was a, a really big 49ers fan. Huh. Man. Yeah, you could tell at the end of that Rams game that he was like, I'm going to be looking for a new job. Really? Yeah. 
his fa- it was written all over his face. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, I wonder what the Venn diagram breakdown is of people that are interested in specialty coffee, interested in the workings of a specialty coffee business, and interested in uh, NFL sports. Or like NFL. who's in the middle? Yeah, I think there's like probably four to six people there, and, and we're we're the we're the base three. We we account for three. There's of one the six. additional. Yeah, I'm like, and that person doesn't even come to mind right now. Besides, like maybe my family or my friend Matthew. <laughs> yeah, but we don't do it for them, huh? We do it for us. That's, That's one, right. This one's for us. That's right. But uh, today is a very special day, boys. It's a very special day. Do you know what day it is? Tuesday. February. Oh. Yeah, February. Today is February. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the topic of today's show is one of the main reasons I feel like we started a podcast. Or at least like we we would always talk about how, you know, we really need to record a podcast about coffee carts. Because of all the inquiries we get... Um, they're innumerable. I mean, innumerable. They're innumerable. Um, innumerable. I would say, I would say, coffee carts. You know, rule out of all the inquiries we we get. Like, rule out like, hey, what are your hours? You know, are you closed on President's Day? That kind of stuff. Questions about how to start a coffee cart are by far the the hottest topic, and. Um, Lord knows we have sat mm. down with many a uh, you know potential coffee cart entrepreneur mm-hmm. at this table, boys, at this table. And we've talked about all of the potential downfalls and because a lot of people have an idea to start a coffee cart and for good reason. Um, and they know that we started out as a coffee cart. I don't even know if you can call it a cart in the beginning. I'm sure uh, Big T's got some juicy picks for us. Juicy picks. Um, maybe while you're, if you're pulling up any juicy picks or not, no pressure. What if we, oh, hello, Scott Ulrich. <laughs> Scott Ulrich, already mm. two, two appearances on the podcast. Um, oh, Scott. Dude, look at, um, so for all of our listeners, we're looking at a picture of one of our first events. That first event happened to be Ross Gordon Walters' wedding. Oh. And I have a mug to prove that we were there, right? <gasps> what oh, happened? He had a boo-boo. Dude. Oh. Scott, hope you're okay. <laughs> I hope that didn't happen on our, on our bu- books. No, we, don't have, we didn't have insurance then, I think. No. We'll get to that later, right? That's right. We'll talk about insurance later, Ethan. Yes, yeah, stay tuned for all you insurance uh, junkies. <laughs> we're going to be tackling that. Um but, uh, yeah, I was thinking, what if we... I wonder why, maybe tackling some of the reasons why someone would want to start a coffee cart sure. in the first place. So maybe we could, I could share our example and then spitball some other stuff. Because, you know, the, the motivation for why would kind of uh, hone in your decision or, you know, make you consider how you're going to grow and propel your business forward um, and, like, how you want to build your infrastructure um so for us at least we just always had the dream of having a cafe right am i right there that's right we dreamed of having a cafe we love the idea of having a permanent residency um to unto the city that we're in where we can uplift people through coffee daily and build rhythms and relationships and um almost uh change the landscape of the city for the greater good. That's right. Um, so, but, oh, so, so, but, um, we were 18, 19 years old, uh, not, not many dollars to our name and, you know, doing a full cafe build out's going to run you a big hundred, 200 K I'm talking hundred thousand dollars. And uh, one one can't just jump right into that, especially the bank isn't too keen on dishing that out to youngsters that just got their first credit card, you know, six months ago. 
So I think it was due to a phone call that you received <laughs> while working at a coffee shop of, hey, do you, hey, this is, uh, you know, Leanne. I was going to say Nancy. Nancy. Nancy, I'm calling for uh, my daughter's wedding. Uh, do you guys do like mobile coffee? Do you like make uh, espresso drinks? Mo- mobily speaking. Mobile. Mobile. You go mobile. And uh, what would you say, Ross? Well, she was asking if the shop I worked at did that. And I said, you know what? We don't do that here at uh, the coffee shop, but my business partner and I do do that. Do do. Which uh, at the time um, was, you know, I was re- referring to Riley, who's sitting across the table from me now, looking great. Um, go Braves. Um, they're, but, they're adding this emoji in the update, the kidding. iPhone update. You're kidding. I promise. It's just two fingers? This, it's, it's like the hand. Let, it, let like it be this. documented that Riley is doing the uh, finger hearts. Is that what you call With it? With your thumb and your index finger. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you need to know. Yeah, just just look at our uh, cover art if you want to know what it is. Anyways, um, so I said, yeah, um, my business partner and I could totally make that happen for you. But basically, I was just taking an idea and running with it um, because Riley and I, I don't know what our conversation had really looked like um, before that. But I know we had we had talked about starting some sort of coffee company or at least wanting to. And so I was just planning on we're going to make this work and we're going to cater this wedding. Um, but nothing came of that wedding. But what what did come of that wedding, boys, was... <laughs> nothing but something. <laughs> yeah. It was, it always... was an idea. You know, it was an idea. And uh, we took it and I wouldn't say we ran with it. I said, you know, we kind of walked with it for two years. We took a walk with it. Run, don't walk. So it was uh, the cart in short, was a means to an end, right? Correct. It, we were seeking a, a different destination, and we utilized uh, catering, pop-ups, one-off events as a means to build audience, build revenue, build culture, build values, build, build buildings, <laughs> so forth and such. Uh so I think that is a good reason that we did some of the things that we did. It's good, like foreknowledge. Um, we we made temporary sacrifice in short, right? Mm-hmm. Like we did things and we made decisions that were like, yeah, but we're trying to just do this for two years. Versus another motivation, which would be, I want to have a coffee catering company, and that's like that's what I do. Yeah, I've definitely talked to people like that where. Some of them are having a coffee cart so they can have a cafe one day. And then some people that just literally want to have a a coffee catering company. Um, And this was, this was five years ago. And I, I don't claim to have all, uh, you know, omniscient knowledge um, about the mobile coffee, specialty coffee catering cart scene. But, but I will say I, I, believe we were some of the first to delve into this um at least in the way that we did um someone may you know write in and be like hey you're wrong and i would just be like okay like i believe you heard um but as far as i know um the point is we didn't have a ton of resources to draw from to like to do this um and the the there's the big con of being a a trail bay. Oh, a trail bay. That's right. If you're going to be a trail bay, you got to you gotta play it fast and loose. Be a trail baser. Trail baser. But anyways, um, that would be one reason you want to start a coffee cart is if you want to have a cafe one day. Um, and, you know, feel free to, to get me off of this trail if you like. But there's kind of two different ways you can... At least, there's probably more than two, but two main ways you'd want to do a cart. One is catering and one is vending, right? So catering would be like you are going to a private event and someone has hired you beforehand. Let's say, just say it's a wedding. That's the easiest. Someone's hired you for three hours to come serve 250 people. 
and they are paying you beforehand. They might give you a, a fat tip afterwards. Um, so that's one way. Another way is vending, which is which we've done both. Um, you go to a farmer's market or you have a daily pop-up or whatever, and you are charging customers, uh, you know, per drink. That's not necessarily catering. That's just like, you're acting like a coffee shop on wheels. Um, and we'll probably get into more of the differences there and the certifications needed for both later. But, um, all that to say, like if you were starting a coffee cart to have a cafe one day, having like a daily pop-up somewhere is a really good way to accelerate your growth into having a actual brick and mortar cafe. Cause you start to build regulars, you start to meet people, um, especially if you can do the pop-up in the area where you will open your future cafe. Um, that's what we did. And was it easy? No. Yeah. Was it inconvenient? Yes. But our cafe day one of our cafe was a lot hotter because we had two years of pop up under our belt. Muy caliente. Um, quick thing: Can you pull your mic stand down and then turn your mic more up, just to where we can see your gorgeous face a little more? Is that better? Hey, handsome. <laughs> good it's to me, see you. boys. Didn't even know that was back there. It's me. Um, maybe I think a good place to start. Uh, and I love everything you've said so far. So mm-hmm. do not get me wrong. Uh, we can just kind of go through a little backstory of who we are for the listeners who are going to tune in for the first time to this one. Sure. Wow. Um, so we, we already kind of touched on the coffee shop we worked at, Ross getting the call, hitting me up. Uh, Ross and I want to start this business and then we wind up finding Ethan mm. uh, or Ethan found us really. Who yeah. knows? Yeah. Who knows? Um, and then <clears throat> bloomed an incredible friendship uh, and business. Yes. What, uh, what was your, do you recall, you know, we say the story about Ross getting the phone call mm-hmm. hundreds of times at this point. Mm. Thousands, thousands. Mm-hmm. Where are you? What like? What do you remember? Ross coming to you? Well, that's the funny thing about that job is Ross and I never worked together oh. one time because only one barista was on at mm. a time because it was so slow. Right. <laughs> so he probably just like called me afterwards, or we were we were like riding to school together at UNG, and he was like, "Good night, Hawks. I have an awesome idea." So awesome. You're not going to believe it. Uh, but And you bit. I, oh, I bit. Bit I'm, hard. Yeah. I was like, anything to just make a good coffee company oh. that changes the way people, people perceive, perceive coffee, coffee in, in North, North Georgia. Georgia. Wow. <laughs> sorry. I just was, I was, I was curious about that. So I'm sorry that I interrupted, but. That's okay. Uh, so we start Oof. this company through some means, Ross. Well, so before all of all of that, all of this, we have an event at our church. Okay, Soma. Uh, and we didn't have any any stuff. We we had we just our had home our home brewing, brewing equipment. That's right. And so we brought that over. Um, I remember the morning of, we couldn't figure out getting hot water. Like, we didn't even think about that. Yeah. And so Rachel had to go buy us a kettle at Walmart. It's in my kitchen to this day. Wow. wow. Yeah. I think that's a company asset. I'm going to need you to bring that in. Well, Rachel probably bought it with, like, our money because wow. we didn't have company credit cards at the time. So I don't know. But I'll tell you what we did buy. Those aprons. Oh, yeah. That was our first. We were like, yeah. okay, what is the first thing you need if you're going to start a coffee company? Apron. A $200 apron. Probably not $200. Probably $70, if I had to guess. That sounds about spot on. It's not bad. There's, we still have them. Not good. It's hanging up in there. One of our longest standing assets. That's right. Now, something you did buy as well was the coffee. Do you remember what coffee you bought? Yeah, it's probably sitting on the table. Maybe we'll get to it. I know there was definitely a coffee from Brash. Yep. yep. Definitely a coffee from Counter Culture. Yep. Yes. And then a, a coffee from Parlor, right? Yes. Yep. Ding, ding, ding. Wow. 
We're yes. looking at the pictures now, and Check these boys are handsome. Was I there? I don't think you were there, baby. Did you do it twice? We did not do that twice. Then I was there. Really? Well, and we that, did the cart there one time. We did do the cart there one time, but we didn't make pour overs there twice. Yeah, yeah I was there. I think I was just uh, not official involved. So oh, I was. Hey, Maddie. That's my oh, sister. Maddie. Um, yeah, I mean, I think. I also didn't have an apron. That's it. That's why you were in the bar. There's our pop-up table with a bed sheet on it. That's right. Uh, two Barats Encores, two Chemex, some kettles, and some uh, some dosed out copies from Parlor Brash and Counterculture. You know, even though we this event was literally nothing, like we didn't get paid for it. It was just on a random Sunday morning before service started. I think it it is important to just do something. Like, if you're thinking about starting something, it's important to just do something. Whoa. Um, because if you are so paralyzed to, you know, reach some certain unknowable point before you start doing anything at all, then that, that point may never come. And you Preach. may just... You may just be paralyzed by perfectionism. Mm -hmm. Paralyzed by perfectionism. Uh, Walters. Yeah, so that was our first event on that pop-up table. We did another one that I can't seem to find the picture for right now at an engagement party, and that was our our, our first paid-for event. Mm -hmm. I think we probably got, what? 300 bucks? I, w I would say 300. Yeah. Um, it's within our Instagram somewhere. I don't, I don't know where it is. But um, we did that one also on a foldable table that came up to Ross's knees pretty much. That's so right. He was like hunched over the whole time like this. In a cool way, though. But it was super cool. Yeah. It was really cool. And, yeah. I mean, you didn't get anything on your shirt or anything because you were wearing an apron. Right. No gear, deli, chocolate splashes, nothing. No, 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 no. But it was on a back porch. A hot, a hot Georgia summer night. And this was summer 2016. That's right. So mm -hmm. we're talking nearly six years ago that we got into all this action. Well, it wasn't summer. Well, he said summer. I went with it. It's probably the fall. Was it point. not? I think it was in October it because was... we did Kickstarter August, probably got our money in September. That's another thing we didn't say. After we, I think that we did those pictures and we did that event so we could have those pictures for our Kickstarter yes. of us making coffee in our aprons. 100%. Yeah, I guess this would probably be one of the questions we'd get to later, but talking about price, the cost to start a coffee cart. If we could go back and remember, I think, you know, we raised a Kickstarter for 10K. Mm -hmm. That means we get 9K. We already watched that video, so we're not. We're not no, revisiting that. we don't have to go there. We do not have to go there. And then we uh, we did something kind of risky, you know. Would you call it risky? Risky business. Yeah. We maxed out a credit card. Bad, we an, did. Just another 10K. Yeah. So I guess all in, we spent 20,000 20, Ks. Yeah. Oh. Uh, that's a funny story in and of itself. Uh, Ross, <laughs> <laughs> we gotta laugh more. We love oh, the laugh. Oh my goodness! Oh, we love thanks, the laugh. Mikey. Stop. Uh, <laughs> love you. So, love you. Ross and I were talking after. Well, okay, we'll we'll get to that. Oh, oh okay. We'll get to it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Is okay. it okay if we get to it? We'll get to Let's it. Get to it. Get to it. Yikes. So we're just talking about our comeuppance. Yeah, man. There's so much to talk about. We're going to be here for hours. Oh, buckle in. Hopefully we can splice it up into categories so people can kind of like, we can have those time markers that you have. Yeah, well, maybe we can look at, so, you know, spoiler alert, we put it on IG. That Instagram. We were, we're, <laughs> we were looking for questions and, you know, we got we got some, some bites, speaking of. Most certainly. Uh, do you want to finish this segment of our... Come oh, up first. Well, yeah, yeah. My uh, my thought was that you know, if we're talking about splicing, we can kind of see about plug, 
plugging in the Baby, questions. Do you guys see what I have to deal with? Do you know how to splice, Big T? Yeah, we're it's splice one on one. Listen, it's gonna be me splicing. No, okay? no, 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 no. I'm I'm saying <laughs> we're, I'm gonna be the one that does the categories. No, okay? we're I know. We're splicing in our conversation <laughs> by looking at these questions and saying, does this question refer to this the conception? Does it refer to the build out, the construction? Does it refer to the actual execution of the event? And tell our story while we plug in those those cues. All right. Well, why don't you get a question that refers to the early earliest time? Can I just say something really quick? Yes. I'm sorry for questioning you, Ethan. That's what you wanted to say? Yeah. Dude. Wow. Yeah, I had no problem. It's kind of what business is all about, mm. you know? Compromise. Someone's usually someone's wrong. Usually not me. Uh, you just got to find out who's wrong first. Yeah. Usually me. Yeah. So, if someone is pursuing opening their own shop, would you wreck a cart <laughs> as their first step? Who who asked that? We need we need Instagram handles. That is someone, Hannah Rob Forty. Okay. She looks like she's having a good time in her profile picture. That's Thumbs awesome. up, Hannah Rob. Um, let's just yes, I love it. Here, here is a uh, coming together of minds between our two trains of thought. Maybe we can get up to our cart point, mm. and then we can do that because mm. that'll be so quick. So you want to keep telling the story up until the fact that we have a cart? Yes, because there's. <laughs> There's some stuff in between. You know, it's not we, like we decided to have a cart and we had a cart, what you're saying. You know, yeah. There's, there's some meat on that bone to chew. <laughs> 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 I don't eat meat. All right, Big T, what is it? So we have our first event on that table. We decide this table is not going to work. It was bad. Bad for Ross's back. Uh, so we and decide. Ross is the backbone of our business. <laughs> yes. We decide to build out our own table. Mm. And that is what you can see pictured here of, of Ross and I under this. This is before Ethan was a partner, I guess, because he didn't get any uh, FaceTime on the Instagram. I was just behind the scenes. You didn't get any mid-drift shots? I have a uh, killer mid-drift. Yeah, D- David Funk, dim hot abs. David Funk, we got a shout him <laughs> out every pod. 266 man. weeks you, ago, David Funk, David Funk was there. Of the, friend of the program. Let's do a little review of Ross's abs in this picture. Count them up. <laughs> um, I, don't, I don't know what we were doing. I look so Probably young. just zip-tying some stuff. Mm. Uh, so this is us building the table. Great. This is the table in action at uh, a law firm. Come on. Gorgeous. Valentine's Day. Hey. It's Leonard. 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 Do you still have it? Uh, yes, I do. Um, Giselle broke it in half. Mm. But then we super glued it back, so it's okay. Wow. Cool. As you can tell, so going, this is where I really wanted to touch on this. Uh, we had an espresso machine. We had a grinder. We had that kettle, which we still have. To this day. That's right. Um, and the burner, the eye. And the <laughs> we still use both of them. And the machine. And the machine. Not the grinder. Not the grinder. Mm. Uh, so that's that's pretty much what we were able to afford with our Kickstarter money. And we did run events with that for a little while. Um, it we, was hard, though. Yeah, we didn't do drip coffee. We, nope. we did pour overs at that point. And we would pre-grind the coffee Mm -hmm. at the cafe uh, Ethan and Ross worked at at the point. Uh, And then we would bring it with us. So that was tough, and we quickly realized that that wasn't going to work out. So... Can you go back, wait, before you leave? The the three icons that liked it, is that Dale, Meredith, Ross... Who else? It's funny that. Oh, I I don't know. Just it's me, me and Rachel. I like and the, then someone in the middle. Oh, oh Meredith. Yeah. yeah, me, Rachel, and Meredith. Oh, it's just nice that we're, you guys are liking our Instagram content. Yeah, you know you got to support your own business any way you can. 
Someone's got to. Step I, one. I remember this conversation Ross and I were having. I, I don't remember where it was at. I feel like it was at my, when I lived in my sister's basement. Okay. And we basically were like, this is one of my favorite stories. Tell it, baby. We were like, we need more money. We, we, need, we just need to build out a cart. Because for some reason, we didn't want to build out a cart. Do you remember that? It, it was like, we almost thought, like, we, did, we just didn't want to go down that path. We wanted to do our own thing. With this whole foldable table business? Yeah. Jeez, man. How it, dumb. Who knows? Well, it was the, probably a big thing was the new logistics. Because we could pull off, oh, air yeah. quotes, we could pull off an event in Ross's escape. Ford Escape. Ford Escape, mm-hmm. 2010, Sky Blue. Great point. Um, and not need a trailer. And not yeah. need a trailer. Trailer's yeah. a big deal. I've talked to some people, and that was a big mm-hmm. hubbub. was yeah. like, okay, I have a cart. How do I scoot it? Yeah. So we were having this conversation of we just need to buy the bullet. We need to buy a trailer. We need to build a cart. And we need an EK-43 so we can grind for drip coffee uh, at all points that mm-hmm. we need to. So we make that decision, and we're like, we need more money. Let's go to BB&T right now and ask them for a loan. Do you remember this? I don't remember. I remember the concept, but not the instance. We get into the car. We drive to BB&T. <laughs> go in, sit down in a banker's office, and we were like, we need $9,000. And they were like, we don't, we're not giving a loan for $9,000. Oh, yeah. She said you should get a credit card with us yeah. or something. She was like, but you can get a credit card. And I was like, wait, why didn't I think of this before? Because I had, I love credit cards. Oh, I love huge the fan. 0% interest, 15 months, uh, get your points bonus. Sorry, my ear was itching. Um, okay. That's okay. And I was like, wait, I'm not going to get a BB&T credit card. And then we left and we got a 0% interest for 15 months. Chase Card. Business Inc. Yeah, and we still use it to this day for some stuff. For the cafe. Oh, yeah. Um, it's about to expire. Isn't and that crazy? Obviously the, the, era. obviously, the idea is you want to pay it off before the interest kicks in. Yes. You could, you could, you know, take longer than 15 months to pay it off, but that was our goal. It's like, if we're going to go in debt to Chase, the fine people at Chase, mm. is it J.P. Morgan? Yeah. Yep. Mr. J.P. Morgan, um, we don't want to pay interest, and we we want we're committing to do you know however many events that we need to do to like pay this balance off. Yeah. So we yes. Did we have to have a a LLC to get that card because it's a business card? Yeah, we we definitely had an LLC at that point. Cool. I don't think you have to. Like I have that card personally mm-hmm. as well um, for like my web development company just because I wanted the sign up bonus. If Chase is watching this, they're going to come after me. Do you want to plug your web development business? <laughs> yeah, it's thriving. No, I don't. I don't want to do any <laughs> web development for anyone. Um, so yeah, we, we got that card and we, I used I used to always say, you know, we I think we, we put nine thousand dollars on it. It was I feel like that was one of the first spreadsheets I ever made. Mm. It was like the money we were gonna spend with this credit card. And we had it and we were like, okay, fifteen months. If we break that down, if we only pay the monthly pay like the minimum payment until this point, and then we pay more once we start booking events, then we'll pay it off. And I would always say if we don't have this paid off in 15 months, I don't want to do this business anymore. You guys remember that bit? Yep. <laughs> yeah. We all have our exit bits. Oh, yeah. Mine mine was just pure pessimism that it wasn't going to work. Ross was always on the fence about moving out of country. and uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's so true, man. And, oh, uh, it's true. And Riley gave it 15 months. Yeah. And... We paid off the credit card, zero percent interest paid on all those purchases. How about that? So yeah, we were able to get, I guess you know, about eighteen thousand dollars then to yeah, get a cart in total. But 
maybe we got it off a little easy because your daddy helped us make the cart mm-hmm. because he's awesome. And the table. Yeah. He just Sorry, no, heard no. all of our stupid ideas and helped out. Yeah, because I'm guessing a cart now, I'm, you know, I feel like a lot of questions we get is where do you get carts? How much, mm-hmm. what, what do you spend on a cart? Because what, I mean, we probably spent like 400 bucks, maybe 500 on the cart. On the cart. Yeah. And we talked to your dad because he's a custom cabinet builder. Mm-hmm. So he, I mean, what is a cart but cabinets? Boys. But a cabinet on wheels. That's right. And I, uh, I actually texted one of our wholesale partners, AC, um, over at Comet Coffee Cart. He has a, uh, a simple cart, I think that's called, and I was going to get him to call into the show and give a testimonial about simple carts. Oh. But uh, I just got to wait for him to reply. Can we, uh, can we start our own cart company and call it Stellar Carts? Because of the band? Yeah. That's pretty Done. good, man. I don't know a lot of Stellar Cart, though, so I need to refresh on their discography before we do that. You got to. As an homage to Because we're work. going to do it? Yeah. Um, yeah, so we take that cash, we buy the things we need. Uh, we drove down to like Fayetteville to buy a trailer. Yep. Uh, yes. Ordered our EK43 on Espresso Parts or something like that. Mm-hmm. Would there be a lesson learned in any, any of that? Um, I think there's a lot of lessons learned. Uh, we'll do the big reveal. So this is the cart. Uh, ah! This was our, this wasn't even what the cart looked like initially, which is kind of funny. It, no. We just changed so much so quickly. It, it was, got like three paint jobs, I think. Yeah. It was originally black and it had this like gold lining inside of where that, this is, this part right here is recessed where the letters are and it had this gold mesh stuff. And we never even put va- the Valor letters on at that point before that because we wanted to do like a neon sign in there. Yes. Mm. I remember I was really big about that. You're like neon cells, It's got to be baby. neon. But yeah. as you can see, cart, uh, EK, and then there is a Curtis drip brewer under the counter here. Yeah. And that's how we rocked it. Just like just like this for forever. Uh, we also got a separate utility cart. You see, baby, let's go. Yeah, uh, love the utility cart, and it would carry all of our miscellaneouses, mm-hmm. such as we we still brought the kettle. Brought the kettle. We'll talk about that later. Yeah, why we brought that? That's a good one. <laughs> Life hacks. <laughs> You're gonna hacks. love it. Um, we put syrups and napkins and coffee filters and the cooler sometimes would go under yeah the works the works um you look at look at the icons for this one meredith me michaela beautiful those letters uh we got on etsy they were old uh sign letters that we spray painted white Mm -hmm. isn't it funny that just through that that comes like your your typeface for the oh, company. Yeah. It's true. LOL. Uh, yeah, so thanks for hearing me out there, Ethan. I just wanted to bring us up to that point. Yeah, that's kind of when we hit the shard. I like that look, by the oh, way. Oh, yeah, for sure. That's like one of the most on-brand things that we've done up until now, you know? You always wanted the taper. I feel like that's the one thing you would change. Yeah, I mean, that's hard, and... Talking to a, an efficiently minded man like Brian, trying to get him to make less storage space and work, like make it more difficult. It's just a tough sell, you know? So I get it. And the square's got its own vibe. Some things just looking at it already and maybe not even directly addressing the questions. Um, it's very, our cart was very heavy. Mm-hmm. That's a, a big downside to going all wood and. We chose to go for aesthetic, or I guess form over function, and we put granite, like actual granite, on the top line there. And it was black because our cart was originally black. 
Yeah. So, right. so it doesn't even really mesh with the new paint job that we stuck with for so long. Um, and it was very, very heavy. And those adhesives just aren't used to such a rocky state that piece, the pieces would fall off a lot. Um, another thing I was thinking about, you know, we went from grinder, basically just espresso bar to more of a full cafe experience with catering by adding the drip brewer and the uh, EK. But what that does is ups your power needs. And so we had to figure out how to, and that was, I mean, honestly, probably the biggest thorn in our side when it came to doing any sort of events, catering pop-ups was trying to secure reliable, uh, beautiful power. Um, and we had contracts and we'd say, we need two separate electrical circuits, dedicated circuits. And we'd get there and they say, here are two outlets for you to plug in. And we're like, no. Cause I think one electrical circuit is like 30 amps of power and we would draw more than that very easily. So you need to plug in half of your equipment to one, uh, circuit and one to a different circuit to be able to pull in at least 60 amps of power. Um, that was a pretty big self revelation of ours that even if you tell people things, if, if you communicate it in a contract, no matter how many bold words we put and please initial here, when push comes to shove and you go to the event and it happens over and over and over again that they don't give you what you ask for, it's not their fault. It's your fault for your system. Mm. Uh, so we had to take ownership for that and be like, we built this cart this way and we're kind of kind of stuck like this. Right. And we, I guess we entertained generators as an option. Mm -hmm. We only did that once, to my knowledge. Did well, we rent it or did it was at that men's event outside, remember? Oh, then we did it twice. Okay. Because we did it at the men's event and then we did it at a car show. Caffeine and Octane. Yes. I wasn't there. Was that you and me and like Meredith? Yeah. Something like uh Emma. Emma. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Thanks, Emma. That um, was crazy. That was crazy. It was not a very good event. We did not make much money. Which leads to, you know, talking about catering versus pop-ups and secured funds versus unsecured funds. It's, it's something to consider. Um, we're talking about the cart right now. When it comes specifically to the cart, uh, how did we, do we remember how we decided to go with our espresso machine of choice, the La Marzocco GS3. We had other considerations, but I'm so glad we didn't. Yeah. Um, there was a point where David Funk, <laughs> he lived in Northern California, and we found a Slayer. That's right. And a compact E8 for sale on like Craigslist in Portland. And we were going <laughs> to be like, David, can you go pick this up for us? And ship it back to us because I think the combo was what eight thousand yeah, dollars. Yeah. Yep. Um, which you know, decent deal for that kind of stuff. But we had a lot of worries about how well it would hold up. Which you know, big shout out to Slayer. I've heard it's been it's gotten a lot better. You heard that? I've heard that too. Yeah, and I think our main hesitation, and this is a good point to make, was that it was a manual machine, right? Like it mm -hmm. had the, the beautiful wooden paddle. And I would just love to exhort and implore all of our listeners to, uh, if, if you do a mobile operation, please get a machine that has volumetrics. Please. And if you don't know what volumetrics are, there's a couple different basic types of espresso machines out there. A manual machine um, is 
one where you start the shot either with a button or with a paddle. And whenever the shot is at your desired weight and at your desired time, you have to manually like turn off the pump with your hand and your mind. Um, A volumetric machine is one simply put where you program a button. You say, okay, when I press this button machine, I want you to give me 45 grams of espresso in my cup and the machine stops the shot for you. Um, And whenever you have a huge line at at a wedding, like that is the way to go. I mean, I, I, that just a little point to make in your machine choice, get a, get a volumetric machine. Yeah. Uh, realistically, La Marzocco just has the best support countrywide. Um, I, I won't speak too much for like the Pacific Northwest because I know that there are some other manufacturers who have a good hold up there, but especially for us here in the Southeast, it, it does a lot just to be able to call, uh, good old David Lamont. That's right. Say, what's up, David? What's uh, up, David? Getting lunch on Friday. Yeah. I mean, he's not going to come and fix our machine for us, but he usually knows the answers to all of our questions. That's right. Um, so that's why we went with, with the GS3. Uh, if, if we want to talk GS3 versus Linea Mini, Linea Mini was pretty new at that point, right? Yeah. And especially for like high volume mobile mm-hmm. stuff, it I know a lot of people are using Linea Minis these days, and I've even seen people put two next to each other. Mm-hmm. Um, but at that point, GS3 was really the only single group head option. Yeah, so great volumetrics. Um, it's like the the commercial home machine Yeah, pretty much at the end of the day. So uh, the big change we had to make right out of the gate was ours came with the uh, Cool Touch Steam Wand. That's right. And we kind of panicked our first few events using that thing because we were like, this isn't going to cut it. It just got super, super behind, and it still did afterwards. But uh, A lot better, though. It got a lot better after that. I mean, we, we could steam, what, a couple of, couple of lattes, and then it would tank, and it just took forever. Uh, I think we also turned up the boiler temperature on the steam boiler, like all the way, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I can't remember if that part, that that steam wand, is literally just a Strata steam wand. Do you guys remember? Or is it like a specifically upgraded steam wand for GS3s? I don't. I mean, I would say that they're very similar. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it made, a, it made a huge, huge difference. We'll try to hunt it down and maybe put a link in the uh, the show notes of that um, that steam on. But that, yeah, I mean, you talk about panic. Like, we had kind of based our whole business around buying this machine, and it was like, wait, are we going to be able to have this business if we can't steam, like, multiple drinks in a row? Mm-hmm. Here's the, uh, the espresso parts item. There it is. No cool touch. No cool touch. No cool touch. You don't want the cool touch. Okay, so it's us. not a Strata. It's just no. a... GS3 upgrade. Did you did you do that upgrade? Did we do it collectively? I can't remember. The install of it? Yeah. I can't remember, but it was it was pretty pretty easy. Just disconnect one and put the other one on. I mean, you can probably just order it with it already done. Especially, I mean Yeah, probably. I, I think and this is kind of a plug for us. Um, if you are thinking about starting a coffee company in general and you work with Valor, or realistically, most roasters, especially if you're talking about working exclusively with them or in a larger capacity, you can buy your equipment through them and either get a really nice cost break or um, get service for an extended period of time. So I promise you, if you came to us and you said, I want to buy a GS3 with the Pro or non-Cool Touch Steam Wand, we would hand you the GS3 with the non cool yeah, touch steam. Yeah, just on. do the install beforehand. Yeah. Yep. Um, or our our tech would do that for us. Uh, yeah. Shout out to Bronies. Shout out Bronies. Shout out Caleb. Thanks for listening. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Caleb. Caleb! Oh yeah. Oh my god. So uh, you know, I mean, would you would you guys if you guys were talking to someone at the end of the day, would you just say get a GS3? 
Because I, I think I probably would. Unless you wanted to go really freaky and get a mod bar or something, hmm. do it that direction. Um, well, I remember the big deal with the espresso machine is like, which one of these espresso machines runs off of 110 versus mm-hmm. 220 power? And that's why people are doing the two lineas, you know? Because they can run two separate 110 mm-hmm. circuits, yeah. Um, if you If you can find a way to travel with a generator... That will give you two twenty, mm-hmm. and you also you also had a, you know, a two group espresso machine of some kind. That would you would freaking crush. And I bet there are people that do that. But. Even a even a two twenty GS three would mm-hmm. be dope. I mean, if you're gonna do do two twenty, just do the two group machine, and you'll pump out a lot more volume. But uh, I, I think a lot of our issues that we'll get to surrounding the GS three. Not not at the fault of the GS3, but at the fault of the limits we were pushing it to. Um, they came from it being a 110 machine, whereas a 220 machine would have rebounded so much faster. Oh, yeah. yeah. One little note about the GS3 that is kind of fun. Um, there is this problem that happens over time. I don't know if it's specifically related to mobile operations or whatever, but there was a couple times where... Um, We would be at an event, you know, a line as far as the eye can see. We would press brew to activate Mm -hmm. the pump and nothing would come out. It would just be like, (laughs) and just like, oh no, like no water coming out of the group head at all. Um, And dude, do you, I mean, do you remember the first time that happened? Do you remember like where we were? My wedding. Okay. So your wedding. (laughs) And Ethan, I want to say you, you kind of took the lead on fixing it. You remember? I, I, there was. He loves this story. No, I don't love this story. Well, he loves it. I love it. Uh, well, Big Dog went on his honeymoon, which it makes more sense than anything. So, you know, for the next two, uh, two weeks, maybe 10 days or something, he was gone. You immediately went to uh, Tokyo. You mm-hmm. were in Japan. Yep. So I think we had some. We, we were at that point where we had events on the books and it was like, we have to get this thing functional. And so uh, I just did my own little research and I, I can't remember who I called and talked to, but basically figured out that the more or less the flow restrictor called the Jicklier was clogged um, by just particulates or even just like coffee grounds, like a little bit just getting... Uh, through this tiny tube that creates like the high pressure for the water to go through. And so it's, I mean, it's a haul to take everything off and then like (laughs) you can run like a guitar string through it and try to uh, get it out. We just ended up keeping a guitar string in our tech bag for a little while there. So what'd you do? You took off the the dispersion screen. We can get specific here because this is a niche audience we're speaking to. Yeah, no, I didn't go... Well, I, I went I went both ways. Yeah, you can go up through the group head or you can go back through the supply line. And you'd have to take off the side panel for that? For it the was less one. the side panel and more the top panel. So you have to take oh, off the type okay. top panel, oh, take okay. off the solenoid, yes. take off the water line, turn that, and then feed the guitar string through yeah which which to uh to be clear if you don't feel comfortable doing that get a local tech you really uh, yeah we (laughs) we just did this because we were freaking desperate um and the one of the reasons i bring it up is not only did it happen with us i feel like more than once i want to say um but my good friend and wholesale partner ac like i said at comet coffee carts Comet Coffee Cart. He doesn't have two. Um, he, he's yeah. actually going to be calling into the show later. Ooh. Um, and I have another caller lined up too. Oh but um, <laughs> Ross. <laughs> but uh, I was uh, I was in Tulum, Mexico, of all places, with my wife. As you are, at, you know. <laughs> you make it sound like I'm a world traveler, like Tokyo, Tokyo, Tulum. Um, but I was sitting at a bar with my wife, just enjoying some, uh, time without the kid. And I get a call from AC 
over at Comet. He's like, dude, we're at an event and there's a crazy line and the GS3 stopped working. And I was like, do you have a guitar string? <laughs> I don't I, and I don't think he did, but I said try to find something that you can the smallest line or whatever is comparable to a guitar string and stick it up in the group head and try to declog the what do you call it the jigglier jigglier yeah the, the jugular l e u r so you know there's likely just like a coffee ground lodged in there and he did it and he kept serving after that he was like dude thank you so much. So uh, that was really funny. He like FaceTimed me. Oh my goodness. Anyways, but that's just a little quirk about the GS3 that I've noticed across several different models. Yeah, I guess if we're talking GS3 a little longer, I would say a lot of this stuff with efficiency, I feel like I'm a broken record here, but you know, when you're talking about being a catering operation and like going and doing weddings, pretty much all you're thinking about is how can I make as many drinks as possible and how quickly can I make them? And so versus like if you were to go pop up at like a flower shop in your city, it's going to be a little bit more mellow and you're going to be able to like take your time with the drinks and create more of an experience and you're not probably thinking about the cool touch and all this and that. But since we did both, we were kind of in a mindset of trying to figure out like, because when you're talking to an event, person or say a bride and a groom or a venue manager there they want to know like hey how many drinks can you make like how many drinks can you push in an hour and to be able to say like we can make a hundred drinks versus like I, i can make like 20 you know is a big big difference because if you have a lot of the times these events are you know there's like one to three hours where you're involved and you're being able to serve. So like after a wedding, which is one of our most popular forms of events during that time, the reception or the ceremony would break and we were like the entertainment, right? So we were the thing that they spent the thousand, two thousand dollars on to come out and wow the people. And, you know, everybody just got in line to get coffee and it's all about how fast can you make a quality drink so on that i would just say three quick things multiple porta filters right we talked about this before Mm -hmm. in another podcast for just even the cafe but having one a one group machine sounds really limiting and sounds like you can only make one drink at a time really like slowly but if you have you know one to four porta filters you can be prepping and just every pretty much every 30 seconds you can have an espresso ready and that almost puts more pressure on the milk and the drink formation side you kind of you kind of send that bottleneck to a different area which is good for having a single group head machine um so there's that talking about milk temperature uh i mean we're gonna go here with Yeah, yeah let's go there so this is, you know, this is coffee, all this, the specialty coffee snobs out there, you know, plug your ears, okay? <laughs> Just plug your ears and don't worry about us little specialty coffee entrepreneurs trying to make 90 drinks an hour. Pull here. your teeny beanie over your yeah. ears. Yeah, oh, I'm not wearing mine today. Um, but we, since we couldn't, uh, even with the non-cool touch steam wand, if we were just steam, like, so we're able now to send a, a lot of espresso through at a time. And sub point, we started doing like catering sized menus, and we can talk about menus later, but we started splitting shots and doing like eight ounce lattes so that more, and that sounds like maybe to you that sounds like, oh, you're jipping the guest. And we're saying, no, anybody, the whole point of our experience is that it's unlimited. It's like an open bar. So we're just trying to get as many drinks into as many hands as possible. And there will be like a fraction of people that actually wanted more and will come back for more. And they're more than welcome to partake in more. Um, We would still do like cortados and cappuccinos. Always got to do the cortado, right? That's right. Right, Ross? That's right. And if someone wanted a double shot in a drink, we would just be like, okay, 
Yeah, we'll give it to you. Right. But, you know, 97% of the people were cool. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we were able to then, I mean, furthermore, we're able to, like, get a lot of drinks ready. And the only missing component is hot milk. So with our utility cart on the back bar, we had that burner that Rachel bought for us uh, back in 2016. And we started to put uh, like a kettle of milk and start heating it up to like 140, 130. And we would put it in an air pot, like a drip air pot. And um, that would be what we would dose out the milk for every time we would go to steam a latte. We would crank it on, aerate, spin, whirlpool for like four seconds, five seconds, mm-hmm. get it to get it up a little higher in temp, get air in there, knock it on the, the granite, and uh, it would rip. It worked. That's right. This is all, you know, being under the the value plays of details matter and excellent products and like we would taste it all these things and like it it worked it really worked and so we were able to i mean i think we were able to do you know 90 to 100 drinks an hour yep versus like 25 30 if we didn't make these really considerable changes so if you follow these rules you can 4x your coffee production uh, by following these simple steps do you remember your other two tips well tip one Porta filters, tip two or multiple porta filters. Tip two, split your shots to oh, make. You said it, okay? Yeah, to make smaller, average drink sizes so that you can get more out quickly. But we, I mean, at least I was saying we offered unlimited drinks, so anybody could come back and get more. And then three, um, preheat your milk, put it in an air pot. You know, you're only serving for like. Like I said, probably typically like an hour to three hours at a time. So, and you're going really fast. So, I mean, that milk is going to go very quickly. So, if there's any thoughts out there of like you're going to spoil milk or something, that is, uh, that's a fallacy. Mm-hmm. We've got our, uh, our first caller in about four minutes. Um, but can we chop something up real quick about the necessity or lack of necessity of drip coffee? For a mobile cart because the a lot of the people i talk to want to just be like oh i'll just make americanos for or i'll make pour overs or i'll do whatever um what are your thoughts as far as you know we had that single head g4 curtis under the bar um and we would we would rip some drip do you guys remember if we did decaf two or regular how much how did how much did it help considerably i mean if if nothing else it's like an insurance policy because you one thing you have to consider and and you don't want this to be the case obviously but you will have things break and a lot of times it will be the espresso machine (laughs) yeah or it just won't do things the way that you are expecting it to do them so Whenever you have someone, we, we would always be in the same stations when the three of us did an event. Ethan would be on like concierge talking to the guests when they walked up, getting their order. Um, I would be pulling espresso and Ross would be steaming and pouring milk. So I, w- I would be like pulling espresso and like I, w- I think I would turn around and refill the kettle of hot milk. Yeah. Th- those were like my jobs. Back bar associate. Yeah. And so when the espresso machine stopped working, as it would do sometimes. Or cool. heck, the, I was thinking even the grinder sometimes if we're having a power issue. Oh, yeah. Not getting yeah. enough juice to that thing. For <laughs> sure. <laughs> For sure. I would reach over and be like, get people to get drip. And <laughs> <laughs> and and you would be like, people would be like, what's good? And you'd be like, you know what? We have a just really awesome <laughs> normal coffee. I can put some syrup in there for you. I can put some cream. Uh, and people would get it and they would walk away and they would love it. And I think that was the big takeaway. Since since we were at such a niche amenity, yeah, people were going to have a great time regardless. Right. And they were still getting a good product. Like, I'm mm-hmm. confident it tasted great, and they thought it tasted great. Mm-hmm. Um, 
you just have to be flexible with those sorts of things. And if nothing else, a drip was the insurance to do that. There are a million ways that I would do this whole operation differently. And that is honestly one of our questions. Um, I think I would just have a way to have more drip available to where you can just crush through that line. And iced too. And, yeah, for sure. Um, but I, I would say, in my opinion, it is pretty necessary if you're if you're really trying to do some volume. Yeah. Yeah, I think we entertained the idea, speaking to what you would maybe change, we entertained the idea of trying to like secure, excuse me, um, like big five, seven gallon Cambros to hold iced coffee or hot coffee. And we, we, we cashed in on that a couple of times. It's hard to do that in a really fresh way, you know, like if you got to go off site somewhere, brew seven gallons of drip, bring it to an event, get set up, then serve, you know, you kind of run the risk of either serving under temp drip or old drip. Um, so that was hard, but I think what's nice is we always give ourselves, we try to give ourselves enough time to get set up and like brew drip ahead of time, have just like the multiple portafilters, multiple air pots so that depending on the event, I think we would brew pots of decaf and put it on the back bar yeah, and then have a pot of drip down low um, and be able to brew drip while we're serving out of the other uh, air pot. If someone was trying to either go like one of their priorities was low power or um, like they just didn't have the money to do drip, I would say Americanos would work if you have access to infinite hot water. Because you would, yeah, it's good. You would tank your GS3 or yeah. Linea or whatever machine real quick if you started pulling, you know, eight ounces of hot water every. Honestly, with an uh, with a crowd, the right crowd, you could be doing fifty percent of your drinks. You're you're just taking all of your hot water out of your machine. So, um, I would have to figure out how to cross that bridge. Or, I mean, we can talk. We can get more in a menu, or just like don't offer it. I know that sounds hard. We, we, I feel like, try to offer as much, like, we wanted people just to walk up. We wanted people just to walk up and, like, order a coffee, like they walked up to their local coffee shop. Um, and that was what we did. So we, like, fought for that and had drip, and we even did pour-overs at certain events or, you know, multiple different flavors of lattes, and we offered iced and hot so but if you have like a specialty niche i think that's totally cool to to you know be be true to yourself um dude we get an ac on the line uh we're gonna get jonathan of a low country beanery first do you think it's okay if i just put this up to the mic because he's like i think he's like at his other job uh, i, I don't really want to zoom him in is that yeah. cool yeah uh, i mean you know, what's the worst that could happen, right? That's right. You know, and <laughs> another another thing, like if we ever did this again, I would want to rely heavily on cold brew concentrate for like almost all of our ice stuff. Mm. Like essentially, like the less you can rely on your espresso machine, the better. Right. Yeah. Like I, w I would just generally say that. We're combining a lot of questions here uh, at the same time, but. Uh, Cool. We, um, <laughs> hey, you're talking to Valor Coffee. Long time listener, first time caller. Hey, what's up, Ross? Jonathan, what's up, baby? Not much. How you doing? Doing good, doing good. You are live on the Coffee Sometimes podcast. Awesome. That's great to be here. Dude, for me. big shout out to your boss for covering you while you could take this call. Jonathan. Yeah. <laughs> So sitting here drinking some of your Costa Rica blend. So let's go, what? let's go. On tell me, Rios. tell me about what you're trying to do uh, with uh, Low Country Beanery. Where are you at? Yeah, so Low Country Beanery is like a mobile espresso bar. Um, so we're located in Charleston, South Carolina. Hence the name, the Low Country part. Love it. Um, and so we're really more than just a coffee car. We're like a mobile coffee shop. Come on. So if you walk into the coffee shop, you know, we would serve 
pretty much everything you would see. Everything from all espresso-based drinks, drip coffees. We do cold brew, chai tea. Ooh. Really whatever can tickle the taste buds. We're gonna have <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Pickle master. That's what we're saying. So, yeah. We are excited that this has been going on. Um, we actually had our first wedding expo uh, Sunday, this past Sunday. And it went great. We had a little over 50 people uh, that wanted us to send out more information because um, they were interested in what we had to offer. So we're super excited for that. Okay, so that's an interesting kind of route you're going. Like, are, do, do, Tell me, before I ask that, where are you at with your, like, I guess building out your car and, like, getting your equipment and all that stuff? Like, wh- what stage are you at currently? So everything has been ordered in terms of, let's say, our car, grinder, actual espresso machine. Um the, the car actually came in this past Friday, which was great timing because the event was Sunday, so it came in right when we needed it. Um, the grinder should be here in the next week or two, and the machine is actually on route from Italy um, and should be delivered February 7th. So we are super excited for that because we put that in order man, back in October. So it's right. been months coming. Right. So, yeah, now it's just like this whole dream's kind of coming into fruition. And now it's just kind of like waiting period of like, all right, we've spent all the money we have and we have nothing to show for it. And now it's finally coming in. So we're yeah. excited. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're, we're looking at a picture right now of your, uh, your wedding expo. You guys are two handsome fellas, man. Handsome. I mean, we try. <laughs> we try. <laughs> yeah. Um, so in case you didn't know, we're doing a uh, episode all about, coffee carts um because we okay, yeah we get so many questions about them um because that's how we started off if you were maybe, maybe just say like up to this point what has been one of your kind of main struggles you've been working through something that you've you're not quite sure about as you're starting up something that you're trying to work around that like you think would be helpful for people yeah um i would say one thing that we really what we really realized um, this past weekend is, you know, let's say we had, we had about 50 people say, yes, send us over a contract. We'll look it over. Right. That's great. At, you know, the first glance, you're like, wow, 50, 50 weddings. We're booked every weekend. Right. Um, but some of these weddings, you know, are not until two and a half years out. Mm -hmm. And so we really like had the realization that I'm like, wow, this is like, this is a very slow process. Um, and like right now, you know, yeah, we have 50 contacts, but over two and a half years, that's not that much. And sure. so a lot of legwork is going to go into this next cast stage of really just getting our name out there. Um, and I would say that's that's the part we're kind of really being really patient with right now. And we didn't realize it'd be like this until kind of this moment of like, oh, wow, like this is going to be a lot more than just going to a wedding expo and then showing up. Um, this is going to be able making a lot of phone calls and getting her name out there, trying to partner with say restaurants, um, different venues, wedding planners. And that's, that's one thing that we're like, you know what? We didn't realize this is going to be this much work, but we're looking forward to it. Yeah. So it, would you say your, your like target market is weddings it, or have you narrowed would, in on that? Yeah. So weddings is going to be our main focus. Um, just because where we are in Charleston, Charleston is one of the, you know, the cities with the most weddings in America. And so that market is definitely huge down here. Um, sorry if you hear dogs barking in the background. I got three of them with me. You good. Um, so, um, but yeah, so Charleston, I think it's one of the top five cities in the country for weddings right now. Um, and so we're really going after that market, um, because also there's not really a mobile espresso bar, um, down here and with craft coffee and, espresso and the the whole coffee culture in Charleston is huge right now. Um, you know, it's really something people enjoy. There's a whole movement behind it. And so we're kind of jumping on that train. Um, but we'll do more than weddings. You know, if you got a boat party, you know, put us on there. We can go wherever you're more mobile, baby. (laughs) Yeah. Wear those Sperry's and see what happens. Yeah. All we need is an extension cord. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I think we're actually going to call your boy AC later. Um, yeah. and talk about because you guys both went with uh, simple carts, right? We did go with simple carts. Um, and I know the reason we went with them is 
um, just from an aesthetics standpoint, is it is very pleasing. It looks professionally done. Um, it also packs down very small. Like I drive a Yukon, just a good old mom car, and I can lay my back seats down and put the entire cart in the back of my car. Um, wow. So it's very mobile. It's got wheels. Oh, yeah. And the way they, like, do the engravings with your logo, we have a pretty intricate logo in terms of design and detail. It's great, by the way. It came out so crisp and clean. We were very happy with it. Yeah, man, that's great. Well, um, that grinder should be coming in pretty soon, like yeah, I Ross. said. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, it's out of my control, but, hey, it's going as fast as it can. And uh, we're so stoked to be partnering with you guys. And um, yeah, we're thanks happy for to be a part of the team as well. Yeah, dude, thanks for calling into the show. Uh, so impromptu. Oh, yeah. I was just kind of like texting you while we were recording. So <laughs> yeah, but dude, I just want to give a shout out to you guys. I mean, if you think about, it, if you trace this back, this all started with y'all. Y'all started as a coffee cart, and then you know my boy AC that we've been talking about uh, up with Comet Coffee up in North Georgia and Tennessee. Um, you know, he's doing the same thing we're doing and he started his because of you guys and I started mine because of him. And so if you think about it, you are the true pioneer of this. So shout out to y'all for all this. Well, all that well, hard work you. is paying off for you guys. <laughs> well, thanks, man. That is too sweet, too sweet, too sweet. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> can't wait to keep following along and, uh, love you so much, man. We will talk later. Dude. Yeah. Likewise. Thanks for calling in. Hope you all have a good one. You too. All right. See you guys. Peace. Okay. Blessings. What a kind fella. He's great, man. Um, yeah. Uh, if you're in the Charleston area and you're trying to book a wedding or a boat party, for that matter, <laughs> yeah. uh, low country beanery all day. All, all day. day. Um, look at this simple cart stuff. Simple cart, you better be calling us soon because we've talked about you a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the fact that it can fit in a car can save your operation. Couple grand. Couple grand right there. That's, that's fly. That's fly and fi. Well, our next caller is slated, um, you know, for in the next 10 minutes or so. So we can go a couple minutes on maybe one of these questions. Can you turn that stupid lamp back on? It always goes oh, off in the middle. Don't curse this lamp. Don't curse the lamp. I curse you. Oh, no. Blessings, lamp. You have been restored. <laughs> well, maybe I don't. I, we're on. He was talking about event types, right? Right. Right. And uh, <laughs> talking about event types, right? Um, there's a certain desperation to a startup where you'll take anything. And we took anything that came our way. That's right. I mean,. Church of Scientology, we're looking at you. Been there. Drag shows. Yep. Uh, free brunch pop-ups, trying to turn something into something. Um, movie sets, weddings, whatever. So I understand. Graduation parties. Graduation parties. Uh, no boat parties yet. Dang it. Yet. 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 Um, but I'm thinking like, you know, what... What is the most like on brand for us? I feel like weddings were just a a beautiful uh, thing to be a part of. I don't know if you guys have any like favorite memories or like I love like even though the cart was a means to an end for us. Um, it says the airdrop was canceled for some reason. Mm. Mm. I'm trying. Except. Some favorite events. Favorite events and like how, so even though the cart. <laughs> <laughs> you look young, man, for all the. Ross and Elron. Yeah, for all the uh, YouTube viewers, Ross is airdropping in pictures of me and Ross at the Church of Scientology, uh, which was crazy. Which, Tom Cruise, if you're listening, it was a pleasure to serve you. That yeah, night. Tom, seriously, big love. Um, that's a that's a good picture of when the cart was black with the mesh. Oh yeah, look at that. Beautiful. It looks like we did get the letters on it at one point. Oh, and then we had a wedding where the wheel fell off. That was awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I don't know. It just <laughs> might be a good 
had a car I, jack. I think weddings were just kind of the best. Like we, everybody is stressed. Yes, like the wedding, the wedding planners. Sometimes they're a, a a wonderful breeze to work with. Sometimes it feels really high pressure. Sometimes you walk up and, like we said, the power uh, requirements are not met. But um, they pay really well. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't really see that changing. Um, and uh, and so you're, you're just able to go travel somewhere, especially if you live next to like a major city like we do with Atlanta. The people are just doing weddings there and they're, they're willing to pay a premium price you know, way more than like a birthday party or something. Like you could serve two hours at a birthday party and make however much and make four times that at a wedding. So right. it's just kind of a, an efficient play. And it is fun. Like we we were able to just like showcase our personalities or at least, you know, put on the show to some extent of like just giving people a really good time. Um, and, you know, I one if you are booking a wedding, a little side uh, note is ask if there are other beverage caterers at the at the gig because if there are if there's an open bar like with alcohol, you're gonna have a real easy time that night because you know you're not gonna be the only you're just a piece of the puzzle right you're just a piece of the puzzle and you can still charge the same amount honestly um, and uh, we have AC calling in. Right now. Come Love on. it. AC, you're live with the Coffee Sometimes podcast. What's up, man? What's up, guys? How are y'all doing? Good, good, good. I'm good. G- glad you could uh, make it. You're here with uh, me, Ethan, and Riley. Ethan, Riley, what's up, guys? How what's up, AC? Hey, AC? hey, AC. Good morning. <laughs> Happy February. Yeah, seriously. Happy February. Yeah, man. January seems like it kind of like went by so slow. I, c- uh, I tend to agree. I would agree with that. Yeah. Um, like we're doing a, uh, an episode all about coffee carts. And Uh-oh. so, um, I just thought I'd give you a call, man, because you're, uh, you're up in, uh, North Georgia, Chattanooga area with Comet coffee cart, right? Yes, sir. Dude, tell us a little bit about that. Like what, what made you want to start it? What have been some of the wins with that? What have been some of the challenges? I'd love to hear. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, so I work at a coffee shop called common ground coffee. Uh, it's part of a church and I'm in a small town, Dalton, Georgia. Um, it's about an hour North of Atlanta and about 30 minutes South of Chattanooga. So I'm kind of in the middle of, uh, two bigger cities, of course. And, um, my heart was just, listen, I see all coffee as a, as a, like a bar- barrier breaker, I guess. <laughs> Um, in, in the community and just a way of just kind of mending some things and just like sitting down over a cup of coffee. I mean, you can, you can seriously just get some cool things going and, uh, and, uh, it's just a good way of doing ministry. Um, and so I saw that and I saw that opportunity being here at common ground and I thought, you know, why not start a coffee cart and go to weddings, go to corporate events and just make people's day better. And of course, you know, have a different source of income, um, and um, me and my wife, my wife has been just a huge part of it. And uh, it's been it's been really great uh, so far moving forward. So it's been exciting. That's so great, dude. Um, yeah. We're getting into like some <laughs> hyper specific, helpful okay. things with with this episode. And so I want to talk about your uh, your like your setup and the guts of the operation yeah. On on these simple carts, because um, we we I actually called uh, Jonathan, your your boy Jonathan, Low Country B, oh, yeah. um, also on this episode, and he talked a little bit about simple cart. But um, what what's on the underside of that cart? I'm dying to know because all I see is this you know, dare I say, simple but beautiful <laughs> exterior. You got a little hand sink going on. We're looking at your Instagram right now. But what okay. is what is the like plumbing and power side of that thing look like? Does it come yeah. outfitted or did you have to do it? Yeah, no. So it actually comes like you can order it the way, you know, the simple car itself. And then you can do everything else like added on. So I actually got a breaker box um, that came along with it. It has two separate, um, 
I guess, units. Uh, like one side has its own breaker and then the other side has a separate. And it has a flow jet connected to it and then two water tanks, of course, one for clean water, one for uh, disposable water and uh, dirty water. Um, it comes with a boiler. Um, and and then, of course, the, the part, the tubing to connect to the sink. And, yeah, so it's kind of kind of hard it's it's kind of bundled up under there you don't really have much room for storage or anything else um but it's it's i mean it's an operation man when i when i show up to an event when i show up to a wedding i mean i have to show up about two hours beforehand Mm. just to get it all set up get it running make sure it's going and it's a whole operation you gotta you gotta know what you're doing and it takes trial and error but once you get that thing going man it's 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 pretty awesome i was telling uh everybody about the time you called me, um, and I was in Mexico, and oh. your uh, your espresso machine was all clogged up. Yes, um, that was one crazy. But like in that moment where you're just under pressure, and you know you got paid a ton of money, probably up front, like you yep. know beforehand, like what's going through your mind, and like how much how much are you sweating? <laughs> Bro, like, are, are you a was... sweat under armpits guy, or what are we working with? <laughs> Dude, I I start talking a lot. So my <laughs> nervous tick is I immediately just like shut down, but you would really never know because I just start rambling and I'm just like, all right, guys, like I'm going to, sh- I just make up something. I'm like, I'm going to shut the machine down for a few minutes just to give it some time to rest. If y'all come back up in 10 minutes, we'll be ready to go. And my wife just looked at me and she was like, uh, what are you doing? And I was like, oh yeah, we're good. We're good. And I just walked outside and I immediately started calling people. I called Jonathan first. Cause Jonathan was just then getting into this kind of coffee business thing. Like he, he's really smart. And, and so I was just like, Hey man, like, what do you think? And he's like, I have no idea. You need to call Ross. <laughs> so I called Ross. He wasn't picking up. And I was like, Oh God. So I called Ethan. I don't know. I was all over the place. And then you picked up and you're like, Hey bro, uh, I'm in Mexico right now, but this is what I think is wrong. And, uh, it just so nonchalant. I went in there, took a screwdriver, like took my machine apart, went to the exact part that you told me to go to. And it, it started working. And I was like, this dude from Mexico just got my machine running at a wedding that I made like tons of money. Like what a lifesaver. <laughs> <laughs> that <laughs> is- That's really how it, went. it was crazy. Well, it's certainly a skill to be able to keep your cool, right? Like it's yeah. n- not everybody is is cut out for that. Um, no. But it's interesting right. with these. Just a, another point about simple carts is it is it fair to say that like it's really easy to transport because you can you don't even need a trailer. Like it breaks down all the way. But like you said, yeah. you kind of have to get there pretty early to like assemble everything. Like it's not necessarily yeah. like you roll it out of the trailer and you're ready to go, yeah. right? Yeah, for sure. So like with any business, of course, and y'all know this from what y'all did, you kind of just have to roll with the punches. And going back to your question before, like when something goes wrong, you just got to, I mean, you just got to know how you're going to handle it. And and that's the beauty of this business is you're kind of the service, depending if you're doing weddings or you're doing, um, you know, a corporate event or something like you're, they don't, necessarily know exactly what model you're bringing in and so we had to kind of learn that the hard way the first few weddings i mean we were learning all this stuff and so we were just of course things were going wrong that weren't really the biggest thing in the world but i thought they were the biggest thing in the world and the more i've learned the more i realized like hey i'm the one that kind of dictates how this is going to go that's good you know and so like as soon as something goes wrong rather than like freak out like i'm just gonna i'm the one that kind of sets it like in my package i have this amounted a lot of time. And so if I'm an hour and a half in, and I still got two hours. Like it's not a big deal. If I go over 10, 20 minutes, like they're going to see it as like, Oh man, these people are nice. They're, they're staying over 20 minutes. But in my head, like I'm thinking like I had to do that because my machine just crashed and I got to fix it. Exactly. So, so it's about, it's all perspective. And, um, so yeah, so that, that's, that's the beauty of how simple the card is, is that it's, I mean, when something goes wrong, it can only be one or two things. It's like, all right, my tank is full. It's getting clogged up in, you know, the tubing that's going to the, the flow jet. Like one of my, you know, my breaker just went off because I have too much power going to this side. Like, I don't know, just different things like that. But that's what's cool about simple carts is that it's, I mean, it's simple. And so you just have to base, do basic troubleshooting. Um, and, and then at the end of the day, it's, it's just figuring that stuff out and making it as quick as possible. So... 
Love it, man. Well, uh, thank you so much for uh, impromptu calling in. Um, I know <laughs> I was just like texting you about it. But uh, yeah, dude. much All love, right. dude. Uh, look forward to talking to you later. All right, man. Appreciate y'all. Bye, AC. Bye, AC. Bye, love you. See y'all. Love y'all, bro. Wake me up. Wake me up inside. Can't wake up. Can't wake up. Say, man. Um, man. Uh, if you are in the Dalton or Chattanooga area, mm. check out our boy AC at Comet Coffee Cart. And Common Grounds Coffee. Oh, yeah. In Dalton. That's a sick logo. I didn't I know. Yeah. I didn't know if he would be able to hear me, so I just didn't talk as much, but I wanted to tell him. And if you're listening now, AC, you might have already tuned off because, you know, you're your not your parts <laughs> over. But love the logo. Yeah, it's beautiful. Um, I know Summer, right? Summer. His uh his bride is a very talented photographer and got a great look. Yeah, their Instagram is awesome. And yeah, they're just There they are. Yeah, wow. that was at their wedding. Look at that. Wonderful. Beautiful people. Beautiful. Um, yeah, so I, I think I think after having the conversation with them, we have an answer to one of the questions, which is who is your go to cart builder in ATL? And I'm sure you could find someone in ATL. But simple cart seems pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Especially if you could marry using this cart with a trailer. Yeah, and you just did both. If you wanted to go this direction, and I'm gonna talk more later about my suggestion for what direction you should go. Um, yeah, I, I think you know that's one direction. Another direction is our friends at uh, at Little Wolf. Um, shout out, uh, Melissa. Hey, Melissa. Um, shout out, Melissa Bartz. So they uh, they went with uh, Barista Capsule, and I remember. I think Barista Capsule now just goes by Capsule, mm. maybe. Mm. Rebrand. Um, I couldn't even really... Uh, they're, they're doing some crazy stuff. Um, we looked at this picture a lot when we were designing our stuff. Do you remember that? Yeah. Like, it's... I remember looking at this specific image so much. Yep. It has the taper. Mm. Yeah. It has the raised edge on the bar with the inset. So this was, this was like a bit of the inspiration for our cart design. Right. Um, so that's another direction you can go. Look at that time, September 10, 2016. Yeah, that's right. Right along the time where we were transitioning from table to talking about doing a cart. Oh, yeah. I like the EKK. I'm like, what? <laughs> why? <laughs> but, you know. We want to know, Melissa, why? Yeah. Well, if can the you customer, get Melissa on the horn, actually? <laughs> I yeah. could. <laughs> if, if the customer wants to walk up and kind of grind some of their own coffee, you know, they can... Kind of yeah, with that. honestly, if you gave it's like a grocery store, you give them the bag and you're like, all right, grind it for whatever you want. Genius, genius, you know. And one just to to kind of put a bow on that conversation about uh bar flow at a wedding and how to crush through a rush and all that on that little wolf picture, you'll see a uh an iPad, you know, on the left left side of the bar if you're you know, stage left, if you will. Um, but you may think you would just use the iPad on vending dates. Like you would, you know, use if you're at a farmer's market or whatever, you're charging people with the square register. So that is true. But y'all, we, we relied very heavily on a two iPad system, uh, for the catering days. We would take orders, you know, Ethan would stand on the left side of the bar and he would take or the right side of the bar and he would take orders with the iPad and punch everything in as, you know, zero dollars and it would send it over to our uh, our Fresh KDS, which Fresh KDS, if you're listening, you'd be a great sponsor for us. Um, and, you know, the, the tickets would come up on the kitchen display. That was, gosh, I, I don't know if a lot of people do that, but I don't, I, we, we wouldn't have been able to make it without Big money. Big money. I mean, um, yeah, check out Fresh KDS in it. I think it maybe only integrates with Square, if I'm not mistaken. Could be wrong. but um, I, I think so. It's like, per, it's like made for Square. I mean, it, it has to be because Square should just offer that functionality within their own platform, and they don't, mm-hmm. whereas other POS systems usually have kitchen display options. Right. 
Moral of the story, kitchen display is way better than like sticky notes or writing on the cups. We've had disasters there. Yes, we have. Ooh, you want to touch on it? Yeah, I'm, one of our first weddings, um, <laughs> uh, I think you and I set it up and then Ross showed up afterwards because you worked at the same place yeah, the and woes, had to change shifts. The woes of operating full-time jobs and trying to do your little do your side hustle, right? Yeah, so this was our first experience with um, with a crazy, you know, just like the the wedding gets released and you have a line of 100 people. Mm -hmm. And it was windy. Um, it was the winter. It, it was cold. It was the winter. Uh, you were outside. I, w I was outside. Ross was outside. You had your aprons on, though, so at least you're... Front got a little, little bit warmer. of warmth from the raw <laughs> denim. We're almost out of espresso in that hopper, though. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah. And also, I know who that is in the reflection of the machine. Who? <laughs> we need a name. Michaela Wise. <gasps> hey, Michaela. I have never noticed that. I got married at this venue, though. You did, <clears throat> Juliet Chapel. Yeah. So we're 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 crushing. As soon as all these people walk out, we have sticky notes. Ross's taking the sticky note, handing it to me. Huge gust of wind comes in. That's right. Sticky notes everywhere. Drinks out of order. Line. <sighs> Grandma's mad. It's it's nuts. The bride needs her coffee now. Yeah. Uh, Whoa. You live and you learn, huh? YOLO. Oh, this was this was the cart, though. I, I thought it was one of the first. I guess it was one of the first events with the cart. That was probably a better description. Yeah, because I think it was like early 20. 17? Mm -hmm. Man, Man, look at how good the EK looked. Woo! Oh, all right, Is that man. the one that's out? That's the Franken EK. Yep. Franken EK. We dropped it on the ground. I dropped it on the ground. We didn't have to go there. We. Hey, we no shame though, right? I would really love to see the security footage from that. Is there a way we can retrie retrieve that? Because that would be a really good like <laughs> opening segment, me dropping Where was EK. it? Right by the, the kegs. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think that was before I started paying the monthly fee to be able to Dang it. look at it. Because I realized, I mm. thought I was the whole time, and I wasn't. So, Well, uh, if you wanted to break into Valor <laughs> HQ, you missed your chance. That's, That's right. right. Uh, what else did you send me here, Ross? Uh, just a little something. Let's see. A little something I saw. There <laughs> it is. <laughs> that was at your wedding, Big T. Aww. Dude, you look funny. Dude, what's up with you? What is going on? I don't know, man. The sun is in your eyes. You know that song? No. I have so many Guppy, pictures of Jacob Collier. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, go to Cart Builder. They they seem cool. Barista capsule, maybe go with them. I I think the the main thing is don't use a lot of heavy wood. Yeah. Don't use a lot of heavy countertop. Weigh your other options and Literally. try to get that thing as <laughs> light as possible. Do you think there's a world where we could have attached our own electrical breakers to the cart if we knew what we were doing? Because full transparency, we just used two uh, power strips and we would hook extension cords to each power strip and run and find our circuits. But it seems like Simple Cart has like a breaker. I mean, is a breaker a glorified power strip? That's what I was going to say. A breaker is just your safety. You know, like if you trip the breaker, then it's a, a safety function, and those those power strips literally had the same thing. But it would totally probably be better to actually have a breaker box. I think this is a great opportunity to talk about uh, S. Smoother, his question, Sam Smith. Sam Smith. Sam Smith. Sam Smith. He's our roaster, for those who don't know. He's in the other room. Uh, yeah, he says... Biggest thing you would change anatomically. What, dude? Dude, seriously. We don't even out. know what that means. Be right back while I Google that. <laughs> if you had a do over. <laughs> so that is A side of the question. I think uh, B side of the question is from Ethan Ponce here. Thoughts on cart with kegs only. Hot climate, cold brew, nitro cold brew, quote, espresso, <laughs> end quote. Parentheses. Parenthetical. Lattes in parentheses. Comma. Comma. Teas slash seltzers. I, I think uh, 
Sam posed the question and Ethan Ponce posed the answer there for me. Wow. Really? Yeah. I well, I think it's I think it's a part of it. I think I'm on your team, dude. I think if and when mm. we start doing this again. Okay. Uh oh. There are going to be, you know, build a package type of things we can do. Um, okay, so would you have, you know, effectively two simple carts? One with your espresso, kind of like all in one package. Another one with your kegs and maybe like a batch brewer. Yeah, so I think it's I think it's simple cart and it's kegerator. Yeah, because you could just kegerator on wheels. I don't think you, I don't think one could do a simple cart with a keg fridge. Yeah, it would have to be like a uh, ice cooler situation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, okay, maybe I wouldn't even say that's my preferred option. My preferred option is just build out a sprinter and. You just yes. have it all in a truck. Yes. And that's Ooh. that's where a lot of this stuff comes from with like the question of what are the start, startup costs um, and the blind spots you found when launching. We've already talked a lot about the blind spots. We talked about, about how the startup cost for us was around, you know, 18 to call it 18 to 22,000. Um, and then, you know, if someone is pursuing opening their own shop, would you recommend a cart as their first step? All of these things have a, 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 a similar point. Do we know what the similar, or the, the I guess the core decision? What is it, baby? Tell money. us. Money. Money. How much monies do you have? Because if you are going to start this business and it is your end goal, say you want to get a loan for it, say you have an investor, just, just buy the van. It doesn't have to be a Sprinter. It could be like the Ford Transit. But go generic. Or you could do what I was g- going to get Crystal on the line from Coffee Camper Co. But she has a camper oh, van yeah. that has this the same gear you would find in a, a cart in a camper. Yep. So when you do the wedding, you just roll up. I mean, I don't know what the code is about driving with your generator already going or anything like that. But I guess I you could know. do that too if you wanted to. Because the roll up hot. Is fi. Yeah. Well, and then, like, I know Transit and Sprinters, they have uh, bottom mount gen- generators you can get. So if <sighs> you just roll up there. So sick. If you open the door and you're ready to rip, like. Game changer. I've got chills right now. Just but, thinking about that. But big drawback, you can't go inside. You can't go right. inside. That's it. We, um, we went a lot of places where going inside was nice. Yeah. But, but there's enough gigs out there. Yeah, so you, uh, you know, you pick your battles. Um, is it Instacart? Instacart, dog, dog yeah. food and paper towels. That's for my house. That's a lot of paper I, towels. I, I, didn't know we, I didn't know that we did dog food here. <laughs> well, I bring hustle. Dexter in every couple of days. You didn't know that, Dexter. You know, Dexter, if you're listening, as far as uh, sponsor us, <laughs> <laughs> the TV show is sponsoring us. Um, if Sam's Sam's question, what would you change anatomically? I still haven't Googled that, but I assume it means <laughs> like the anatomy of the cart, right? Like and what I've noticed with a lot of these like simple carts and also the barista capsules is they're so small. Mm. Ours is huge. Mm-hmm. Like but I even I'm, I went to JP's pop up this past weekend. Flex. And uh his cart was really small and I was like that seems very nice to maneuver, you know. But man, I'm the big butt guy. It's it's the same thing I get back to about catering. Your 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 production ceiling's low because you can't squeeze three handsome devils behind the bar, right? Mm-hmm. So what's your end goal? Yeah. Because we could do a hundred drinks an hour because we had the real estate for our butts to all be behind the bar. But, you know, you got one guy, you're doing a pop-up, yeah, and, and you can operate the machine, take orders, and do it all right there. Mm-hmm. Huge win. Game changer. Yeah. So just to kind of read this, op- option A for me personally, I don't know if you guys would say this is your definite option A. If you're going to really sell out for this thing, get the Sprinter. Uh, yeah. Do the do the truck. Um, Ross, I know you would barely fit in there, but... It's a big issue. It'd still be good. Um, you can have a two-group machine in there. 
can have a freaking three group machine in there if you want to. Heck. Uh, because of the generator. Because of the generator. And that kind of feeds into my option B, um, which, okay, so sorry. In the truck, you can also have your three comp. You can have, you know, everything you want. Um, option B is you have your kegerator on wheels with your taps on top. Maybe you figure out some other means of storing some stuff and use it almost as your back bar. And then your front bar is the simple cart you have, which I don't even know. Just, I, I would need to figure out really, uh, maybe this will be whenever I talk to them about uh, our, our ad deal. Well, I'll get them, get them uh, some answers. <laughs> um, could you fit a two group on there? And any, do you think there's any drip brewers on a simple cart? I really doubt it. I mm. don't think so. I don't think so. I I think it's a different ramp up, but to answer Sam's question personally, I'm I'm just trying to take the path of least resistance and least like risk, but I know that it changes the value of the experience. There's something about there being an espresso machine, but I I maybe it's just cuz his name's Ethan, but I love the idea of like you're just rolling a kegerator up. You know, you did all the dirty work back at your little base of operations, and you're just ripping kegs of all of these different drinks. Granted, if you're in, you know, Michigan in the dead of winter, probably not a great option for you. Right. But but it it is nice, like, if you're at a wedding reception, people are fine with just sipping on a little cold something. You know, like sure. we have our nitro oat milk, lavender vanilla latte that we do with cold brew and oat milk and our, our signature syrup. Um, and, and that's a easy, 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 you know, dispensing situation. Oh man, look at that. That's crazy. That's a lot. It's a lot of stuff for the listeners. We're just watching the simple cart be built right now. Yeah. Hmm. It's pretty awesome. I mean, I would, my option B would, totally rebrand and just call it cap c-a-p-p and i just make cappuccinos wow in, in ceramics that's so punk that sounds like you would really find success yeah you don't even talk you walk up and you just get a cappuccino right dream scenario dream scenario shut up dude i still love your idea i had an idea <laughs> That if we ever had a cafe, there's a table. It's called the cappuccino table. You go up, you sit down, you get brought a cappuccino. End of story. I know it wouldn't work in Alpharetta, all right? It's, you never know. I don't know which idea is better, that one or the shack. The, the shack, shack idea. Oh, the shack chair. <laughs> Refer to previous episode if you don't know what that is. Can we do both? We just, we just have a ton of uh, like, <laughs> like themed lots tables. Lots of rules, okay? You walk in, there's a lot going on, all right? And then my next one is going to be an escape room coffee shop. Oh my wow. gosh. Yeah. Don't say that on air. What? Yeah, someone could take that idea. <laughs> Copyright. Trademark. Oof. Trademark. You guys. So, uh, if, yeah, kegerator, you know, I don't know. Maybe, I don't want to get too crazy. Do you have three? Do you have three bars? Whoa. What are you hauling? Like, how do you, just a big trailer? Just a bigger trailer. Yeah. You'd have multiple I feel like you'd have to have multiple trailers. Like if somebody wanted to pay to have the full, full package, let's say you had your espresso cart, you had your keg, you know, kegerator, fridge, extravaganza, and then you had probably, uh, you'd pro if you're going to have that many things on a, on a gig, then you'd need uh, a utility cart. Oh, I thought you were about to say a slow bar. Well, if you had a, <laughs> if you had a third, if you have a, have a third, okay. Cart one is the kegerator. Cart two is the simple cart with a two group linea on it. Yeah. Cart three is a cart. It's small, but it has a two head Fetco. Um, and it's also storage. So no utility cart. But it's only like it's only like this wide. Mm -hmm. Why are you That's laughing? So funny. It's so involved. Like we're just totally. We would never do something like this. Like a four, three cart system. It's crazy. Shut never your mouth, man. Never. We were already doing a two cart. And if, if we were able to bring that kegerator in, that's just cash waiting to happen. Cash money. Do you guys want to do it? Yeah. Should let's we do, do it? it? Let's do it. Okay. Oh, 
Lord. I'll, I'll write about it on my window, and I'll, I'll think about it. If you yeah. want to know anything about what Valor is up to, just come look at Ross's window. Honestly, Honestly, you can see it from the other side. Honestly, though. Um, but good luck reading backwards, sucker. <laughs> yeah, that's why you it's can harder than read. you think. So I think, so you have all that. And I think the big piece that I wanted to make within this puzzle, sure, you run it all into your individual breakers. Use a generator. If you have to run it outside, you can still be, be inside of a building. You'll just have to run it outside. But when once you do that, that unlocks 220 power. That unlocks never having to worry about people's stuff, not listening to you, et cetera. And that just unlocks a world of fun, you know? Wow. Well said. It's all about the fun. Generators are fun. But kind of dangerous. Good point. But dangerous fun. Yes. Welcome Sh- to Should we take another question? Zone. Let's take another question. I'm really worried about this, like, the recording stopping like it did last time. You guys remember that? Yeah, I, I remember do. that a week ago. It was so sad. We were right we're... in the middle of talking about Terry Fontenot slash Fontenot. <laughs> Still don't have answers there. Should we Should we go th- there? Licensing? Oh, lordy, lordy, lordy. How, how transparent should we be about that? Um, I don't think we should go there too much. I'll say that. Like a medium go there? Medium go there. A light to medium. Well, let's just let's just lay out the problem at least, okay? So if you're starting a coffee cart. Now, T, speak into this because I, I actually need to know for a, uh, a wholesale partner that's been asking me. Um, you need a business license to make money. Yes? No. Okay. So if I no. if I'm starting a coffee cart and I want to do private weddings, private events, how can I buy the book legally be paid money and like pay tax on it and all that? Let me preface by saying I said no, which is the truth, but also it's not the truth. I just meant like you, you can be a, uh, you can have a DBA, you can be a sole proprietor. I would not do that. And I am just going to lay out what I would do. Okay. I am not a lawyer and you should speak to one when doing this. And if you do something we say and it goes wrong, then we are not liable. Suckers. Um, do you guys agree with that? We're not liable. Do I have to say that word verbatim? Yeah. Uh, I need a script. We are not liable. We are not liable? Yeah, liable. We are viable, though. We are viable. Viable. Um, so just start in LLC. Just, just do it up front and it'll make everything easier in the future and you can have an entity that's not yourself. I'm talking limited liability company. What do you go to your accountant and uh, set that up? I mean, how do you do it? You could do it yourself if you wanted to do that. What we do, uh, we have a great friend. His name's Matt. Oh, God, Matt. Matt. Anytime we need to open a new LLC, which has happened more times than you think. Hello. I get on the horn. I say, Matt, LLC, please. And he says, Okay, he does that, and he draws us up. If you're gonna have a business partner, operating agreements. There you so go. So big that covers a lot of bases. What happens if I die? Mm-hmm. What happens to my equity? Does it just pass to my wife? I mean, and then does she have equal say as Ross and Ethan? Yeah, that's how we have it structured. <laughs> uh, just kidding. But uh, so yeah, it 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 really really clears you up with all that stuff. Um, it. Shows how you operate if you can't come to an agreement on a subject, uh, getting someone else involved. It just has a lot of things you need. So I would go somewhere, get them to draw up an operating agreement that you and your partners agree on, and to file your LLC for you, get you set up with your sales tax, all that stuff. Um, I'm I'm just going to leave it as that. Yeah. I know when you're starting, it seems like, the thousand dollars you spend on that is a lot of money. Just do it. Yeah, it's just as important as your espresso machine or whatever. Yeah. Um, but that that you know, this is a big hang up for a lot of people starting a coffee cart because you read a lot of these uh, you know, health department requirements. Depending on where you are in the country, they're a little bit different. But, you know, we're talking base of operations. Um, and if you don't know, like 
the a lot of health departments require catering units um, like the one that's on the screen um, to have a base of operations, which is a health department certified uh, hmm. three compartment sink present uh, hand sink mop sink um, you know non porous walls. Uh, the right flooring, the right ceiling, all this stuff. Um, (laughs) And if you're just starting a coffee cart, you're probably doing it because you don't have to spend a ton of money up front to start a business. Mm -hmm. And so you don't have money to like build out a commercial kitchen and you can't just use your kitchen at home. They're they're not going to let that fly. Um, And so there's, there's some, ways to not get around it but the the issue is that many uh health department guidelines even city guidelines don't necessarily have a category for coffee carts right um at least when we were starting we haven't really looked at the documents in years but um people you know the manual it'll it'll have a category for food trucks which is a mobile catering unit yes it is uh and they'll they i remember they had hot dog carts as like a another completely separate category just hot dog carts yeah someone i was talking to recently had ran into that with their health department they were like so it's a hot dog cart and he was like well i'm seeing if i can permit it as that but it's an espresso cart and we're going to be going inside and they were like well you don't take a hot dog cart inside and he's like, I know I'm not a hot dog cart. I'm an espresso <laughs> cart. Right. And so it can be hard to see what category Ooh. you fit in. Um, and honestly, one of the biggest breakthroughs we got in this area was like our relationship with our local government officials. Like mm-hmm. we, um, we just made relationships with them. Um, hopefully they're cool. Sometimes they're not. Um, but... Just to say that uh, doing catering events, like private events, um, whether whether you get this thing fully, completely certified or not, um, again, we're not liable for this, but doing uh, catering events where you're just at someone's wedding, you know, there's not going to be a health inspector walking around with a clipboard like at someone's wedding ceremony. Right. Um, again, there's always, you know, risk there but and I think it's not uh, exactly what we're talking about but when if you're wanting to focus on catering events too I think we had to get insurance and that was like a helpful peace of mind thing to have that cost money kind of like the LLC but it was worth it for us to invest in business insurance to have that peace of mind it was cool and kind of on the the relationship side of all this permitting yeah we tried to kind of do it right in one city and and the the nice well the lady (laughs) wouldn't even accept like our application she's like i'm not even gonna read this if since you're a coffee cart like i'm not even gonna entertain the idea of like you guys operating in my city like you will not do it yeah and we said Okay, bye. We're going to go to another city. And the people, uh, I had a lot of conversations in the town that they grew up in, Dawsonville, with like health department and city officials. And I mean, yeah, if you catch the right person, they can look at your situation and be like, I understand the pickle you're in, that you can't, it's, it's very difficult to get certified for what you're doing. And so we were able to get some peace of mind in Dawsonville, at least by partnering with a uh, caterer, like a food caterer, and just be like, hey, can we use your base of operations and like have paperwork on us when we go to events that say like, we're under the umbrella of this company? And she was like, totally. And that was helpful. And then being in Alpharetta for a season, even like we had the city come to us and be like, hey, we're seeing all this. We need to make these changes. And they like, didn't shut us down or anything like that, but they were, they kind of like walked us through what we needed to accomplish and like proper tax certifications to continue operating. So it's not 
it's it's just a, it's a messy area, and based on where you live, who your city officials are, how helpful you want to be, how by the book do you want to be, and how rogue do you want to be, um, it's it's possible. It's just I would just kind of leave it there that it's very custom to your uh, your circle, your circumstance. Yeah, I think. I would say it's the worst part about starting this kind of business. Yeah, I would say. Um, but there are ways to do it right. And again, a lot of it just depends on the capital you're working with. Because if you were going to do it, I would say we still weren't as legitimate as I would have liked to be for peace of mind. Um, we were legitimate and it all worked out and it was great. But if I had an ideal situation... Um, you know, build out, build out your third cart to have a mini three comp and a hand sink on it mm. and a drip brewer. There you go. <laughs> Got it all. You just can't run them all at the same time. Yeah, no way. And, I think. Oh, sorry. And then uh, have a rent a space at a commissary kitchen, mm-hmm. and you, then you're essentially a food truck of sorts. And if you can leave your trailer there, that's helpful because that was a big thought or a big hurdle for us was investing in the trailer. We were like, where do we park it? Still have that. <laughs> yep. Thank you, Brian. Um, oh, what was I going to say? <sighs> it's outside right now, right? Yes. Yeah, it's right. Okay. Oh, every, now, it, now it's outside. Every time I pull up, I try to look. What, see if it's what were you just talking about? The Oh, hand sinks. Remember at the uh, Moonshine Festival, um, they they had like a – some sort of health inspector walking around. He was like, you guys need a... She. Oh, sorry. She was like, you need a, a hand sink or like a way to wash your hands. And we Didn't we go and get like a Gatorade? Yes. Like uh, the Gatorade cooler that you press... The has the button, valve at the bottom. Has the valve at the bottom. Oh, yeah. And then we had just a bowl, like a <laughs> plastic bowl. Catching the gray water. water. Catching the gray water and then like a bottle of dish soap. And we were like, this good? And then they're like, whatever. There are little like actual mobile setups you can get like that. Sure. Like at Webstaurant, like they have like a mobile hand washing station that you spend 300 bucks on or whatever. Right. Yeah, but that just, to me, that was even a testament of like sometimes local officials can be cool about like, so I'm thinking about when we were in Alpharetta and I want to, we can move on from this awesome topic but like um just to know that like i was in meetings with you know the director of zoning and the code enforcement officers and managers and they're like we understand that you're just serving coffee like this isn't a very low risk thing or this isn't a very high risk thing and we want to just figure out how to make sure that you can do this because we believe in you guys so uh that was just awesome. So big props to Alpharetta for taking care of us. Absolutely. Uh, we just got a really n- important question from Prosciutto Baby. Uh, Prosciutto Baby asks, what the dog do? <laughs> <laughs> what what a dog do? I don't even know where that came from. Anyone have a quick response for that? Chonky. And she also said, if you were still doing the cart, what would the dream scenario be? I.e. Paris, courtside Lakers, space. <laughs> like where would we put the cart? <laughs> yeah. Maybe like on a basketball court during a game. That'd be dope. Like, uh, you know, whenever there's like a timeout and they like wipe up the sweat. We roll the cart out. Cart make rolls drink. out, make drink, hand to LeBron. Well, you know, how, you know how Beast Mode has his Skittles, right? Like it'd be great to be on the you know the sideline with beast mode who's beast mode marshawn lynch baby really yeah oh yeah yeah, yeah. he's got the skittles that he downs like after like while the defense is on um i, I, no I would want to be serving the players on the sidelines of espresso yeah that's funny um what else we got here you want to talk about um pricing i feel like we have people to ask about that a lot yeah, someone said, what did the menu look like? Yeah. So maybe we can tie that one in with pricing. Sure. Um, so as far as the menu goes, I think we already talked about it. We really hit a stride when we started doing only 8-ounce beverages. Yes. 
Uh, so split your shots, do your eight ounce drinks. And then, I mean, you can really give the full menu from there. It's just, everything's a little scaled down. Yeah. Um, I would not put, you know, cortado on the menu Mm -hmm. because realistically you're, you're needing to crush through the line and, um, and to be held up by questions of what's this? Mm-hmm. Um, or if you had macchiato and you were talking about a traditional macchiato, you're gonna you're gonna have some holdups, and um, you want to avoid that at all costs. So, you know, be simple. Uh, drip coffee, espresso, uh, maybe espresso. I would, you know, leave that one up to you. People like to have a like a nice espresso after a meal or whatever. Yeah. Uh, you know, iced coffee, Americano, um, and then, you know, obviously put your flavors underneath your latte. Yeah. Cappuccino, did you say that already? Yeah, and I, I kind of go back and forth on that. Since you're doing the split shots, I kind of question whether you should or not because that's also going to be in a little bit of an area for confusion being like if you're a third wave cart. Um, sure. So I would I would go, you know, have a six-item menu or whatever. Right. Uh, and then, you know, be collaborative. I think one cool thing for us is when someone would hit us up and be like, hey, can you uh, can can you have this syrup just for us? Or can we make a syrup and you serve it? Yeah. Those sorts of things are fun. Uh, and I think this idea kind of coming from Ross plays in a, uh, a party band every now and then. Am I allowed to say that on here? Sure. Um, he plays guitar, lead guitar, electric guitar. That's right. In a in a party band. <laughs> it's electric. And uh, they allow their um, brides their brides slash grooms to pick one song. Is it one song? Two songs, uh, and the rest are in their their standard uh, package. So they have mm. songs that include you know probably like I want to dance with somebody. Is that one of them? For sure. Twenty four karat magic. Yeah, you can kind of, there's a whole massive bank of songs Mm -hmm. and they can say, oh, we want the sound to be more contemporary pop or we want it to be more Motown soul. And then they can pick their like two first dance songs or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they can pick the uh, uh, My Wish by Rascal Flatts. My wish for you. Or like a Butterfly Kisses. Is that what it's called? I don't know about that one, man. What about Drops Drops of Jupiter? She's magnet, I must be. Yeah. Uh, so, got on that tangent. You know, what if your package said uh, there is an option, it costs an extra blank dollars, we will have a very special Jacob and Lydia syrup. Wow. Or, we maybe did this once or twice, but people got... <laughs> what? We! <Wee! laughs> I was having fun, baby. It, this is go. the best two hours of my life. Uh, Are we at two hours? Jeez. I think we're over. Yep. Two hours, seven minutes. Um, I think it's cool if you got the inside job, you know, offer the whole custom mug thing. Oh, yeah. That's cool. Mm-hmm. Were we just talking menu? Yeah, menu and, and kind of that going into pricing. Um, we we kind of talked about having a simple menu just so that you can execute it at a high level and you can keep the line moving fast. But as far as pricing goes, we we configured it four or five different ways in mm-hmm. our time. Um, I think we started off, you know, like really stressing over the details of like, okay, are we going to do a per head price? You know, almost like uh, more on the like food catering industry side of things. Um, where if there's 300 people in attendance, you charge six bucks a head or whatever. Um, that's one way we did it. We also like kind of toyed with like keeping track of how many drinks we made and then like maybe billing on the back end. But I don't think we ever really went with that. But that is something we kind of tossed around. Um, and then one of our probably our at least one of our longest standing methods was doing an, an hourly price, right? Mm-hmm. Which in hindsight we charged way too little for. We Whoops. charged three hundred hours. Sorry, three hundred dollars an hour. Um, and so if someone wanted to hire us for three hours, um, it'd be nine hundred bucks. Which in the wedding industry is just so cheap. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And eventually we got to a point where we just said, we, we, I think we pretty much just did custom quotes yes. eventually. Right. And they were always over a thousand bucks. Like we just kind of said, Hey, you know, and, and I think partly part, partly it was because we had such a, uh, so that's a good name for a coffee cart, Partily. Or like your southern daughter. Branchley and Partily. Get back here, Partily. Um, Branchley. Because, partly because our cart was just so heavy and such a bore. And, you know, we were just like, please, we are not going to leave our homes for less than a thousand. I won't get out of bed for less than a grand. Well, you got to consider the intangibles, right? I mean, that's right. That's right. I mean, come on. Because basically, if you have an event, it kind of just takes the whole day. And how much are you valuing your operation for a day of? operating right more or less a thousand is not a lot it's like a bad it's like a bad day at a cafe yeah yeah and that i mean maybe i can imagine that changed uh (laughs) like over time because we got the pop-up in alpharetta right Mm -hmm. we were much less likely even though it was more money to either close to break the rhythm for regulars in the city or, I mean, even just the drag on our lives of most, like for the season of us working other jobs and trying to operate a daily pop-up and trying to do events after the pop-up. That's a strain. So yeah. I think our standards just rose. But, I mean, honestly, I feel like pretty rarely did we get turned down when we quoted any number. That's right. Um, and I, I always think about this thing that you talk about and Matt Perger talked about, um, we're just alike. Yeah. You and Matt, I mean, the synergy is unmatched, unparalleled of you don't charge more just to make more like, that's not your end goal. It's just like, I'm going to make more money. It's to curate the best experience that you can. Um, so when you make more money, this gives you margin for showing up earlier to make sure that you're all set up. Because if like you're charging $300 an hour, you're like, well, we can only afford to get there an hour early to set up. And that gives really little margin for error so that when something goes wrong, not if, you know what Hello, I mean, it's fellas? Win, not it's if. when, not if. if. You're stressed. You're stressed out and you're just like offering a more... Uh, more bad experience. Badder. So when you give yourself margin, you're like, all right, I'm getting $2,500 to do this. I'm going to get there in plenty of time. I'm going to be flexible. I'm going to oh, stay yeah. longer. I'm going to... Dude, the best thing we did was we just got gifts for the... If we did a wedding, just get a <laughs> gift for the bride and groom. That's right. Give them some swag. Give them something personal. Write them a letter. Tell them that you love them. There's just space for that when you know that you're needs of the company are being taken care of. Yep. Oh, yeah. My boy Ramit Sethi talks about that. You guys remember this one on that podcast? Uh, he said something along the lines of, you know, I charge $2,000 an hour for consulting so Whoa. that when I get there and they're like, I'm so sorry, can you please stay another day? Can you please do this? Can you please do that? Like, he doesn't have to say, yeah, I'll invoice you. He's just like, yeah, sure, we will do. You don't mm-hmm. have to pay me more. It's like that's kind of like the um, under. It's almost under promise over uh, over deliver. Right. You know? uh, obviously, we're not charging two thousand dollars an hour for consulting because that is insane. Yet. Yet. No. Uh, but you know, whenever we could, if, you know, if, if we charged two thousand dollars for a wedding wedding that we were going to be at for hours and there was going to be five hundred people there, then you know we can allot a whole day to that. And honestly, our attitudes would just probably be a good bit better whenever they're, we get there and the, they don't have the breakers lined up. Yeah. Uh, they want us to stay for an extra 45 minutes, mm-hmm. all those things. Uh, so, you know, uh, do not sell yourself short. So I was looking back at some of my oldest emails and someone essentially said, you know, I, they, they wanted the espresso cart. And I was like, okay, we'll do it for $350 for an hour or something like that. 
And they were like, you know, that's just, that's just out of our budget. We can't do that. And if, if no one is willing to pay you $350 for an hour of your time making beverages, then they're not, it's not the right event. So, uh, don't, don't sell yourself short on this stuff and just discharge what you're worth. Yeah. What's cool too is say you really want to do that event where someone genuinely doesn't have enough money, but you've made enough money on some other big time Mm -hmm. stuff that like you get the opportunity to do almost like nonprofit uh, events for people that, need or like need that help you know yeah and i think we've done that before where we've just kind of been able to lowball someone who was in a rougher spot but really could have benefited from our service um knowing that you know we're still going to be taken care of in the long run um which kind of leads talking about or thinking about what jonathan was saying on the phone call and one of our other questions was how do you advertise mm-hmm that's a that's a big one. I don't feel like we have I don't know if you guys have any amazing answers, but I'm sure we have insight into like yeah, the reality of the long game and knowing that like if you're going to be in the event business, um basically by you starting now, you're kind of starting like in a year. Yeah. Because if you're going to be booking stuff, but you can kind of figure out on the flip side there are some types of events that are very uh, recent, I guess, or close by. Like I think about movie sets. If you're able yeah. to get into the, the movie set market, the, it's difficult in one area because they'll just call you up day of or the day before and be like, we're going to be in Alabama uh, from this time. Can you come out and serve coffee for three hours? We'll pay you whatever. At 1 a.m. At 1 a.m., so it's like it sucks in some regard, but you have access to really recent events. Um, and if you build that rhythm, that's a really high return area of like repeating events. And movie sets will always have all the power you need. <laughs> Honestly. Uh, yeah, Jonathan from, from Low Country uh, was talking about how they were at a, a bridal expo, right? I think that's an excellent means of advertising that we never did, but we definitely thought about. Uh, to, to go out and set up your cart and just have thousands of brides to be or even uh, venue owners walking right. by and seeing you. And, you know, they'll put you on their preferred vendor list or, or whatever. So if you're doing that, then um, that that's huge for you. But the funny thing for us is we have gotten the most events through having a cafe, Sure. That we haven't taken because we haven't really taken any events whatsoever since we started our cafe. Um, but that's the funny thing is, is whenever you're, you are somewhere consistently. And even when we were, when we were in our pop-up, we were, we were there consistently and uh, the door was open every day for someone to come in and see Valor Coffee. And then that led to people wanting our product at their wedding. Um, so I, I know that that's a little counterintuitive for what most people are doing with a coffee cart because a lot of times you are wanting to have a a really budget operation. Um, so it, it's like you got to start the coffee cart to get to the cafe, but then the cafe will help the coffee cart. And that's why we're, we've are we talked about doing it again because we, we do get hit up a lot by random places wanting the product that they drink every day in our cafe at their wedding. Uh, so... Crash. Sam. Yeah, that's good insight is having two things that bounce off each other in a symbiotic relationship, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you got anything you want to say about that? No, I'm, we're good to take another question if you want. You know what we haven't really talked about is uh, we've talked a lot more about catering than we have a pop up. Right. Yeah. And I think a lot of that circles around the permitting side of it while we're afraid to touch on it. Right. Because it's a little harder with, with that sort of stuff. But um, even with us thinking about signing an LOI on a space in Dunwoody, we were like, you know, should we uh, get a cart and set it up there over there and try to do a, a 
pop up mm -hmm. leading up to it because mm -hmm. that helps so much with our Alpharetta location. Mm -hmm. You guys have any thoughts there? Yeah, well, part of the reason you're saying that is if it's at least when we were looking at all the rules, if it's completely by the book, you actually can't certify a cart for both catering and vending. Right, boys? Right. Right. And so if you have your, your beloved cart that you're doing all these wedding dates with you and you want to start doing pop-ups or farmer's markets, actually by the book, you, you would have to get another cart and certify that for, um, for the vending stuff. And why, you ask? I don't know. It's, We're not sure. I don't think that there's like a different set of requirements you have to hit that would necessitate a different cart. Um, but the, the thing with that is, uh, like our, I know our first like regular, um, on the schedule kind of vending opportunity was at the Georgia tech farmer's market, right? Mm. Boys. Buzz, we buzz. We had, uh, Got we had right a, here. Check it out. That's right. Mark Rockwood's bike. Your wife behind the bar. We love you, Mark. We love you, Michaela. Nice flowers. Remember, we, we used to get flowers. It's Aww. a nice touch. Um, but yeah, we, we would have uh, the cart set up at the Georgia Tech Farmers Market for the students um, once a week, every Wednesday. I, I want to say it dual was... Dual tablets. Yeah, look at those dual tabs. Um, do, do. Oh my gosh, is that the Samsung? Yep. Ooh. I didn't say two iPads. Fresh KDS and not used to not be available on iPad. That's right. On, on Apple, was it like seventy bucks for a Samsung? Uh, yeah, tablet I think we bought it on eBay. Nice, but it's a good way to. I feel like you work kind of a different muscle, like especially if you're in a farmers market environment. People are walking down the row, you know, at the farmers market, and they're considering buying, you know, everything from vegetables to coffee to jams, whatever, and you're flexing a different muscle than you are at a wedding because at the wedding, everybody is there for you. Um, <laughs> Not the bride and groom. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> um, Come for the free coffee. They, yeah. They're just there for the, the benefits. Um, but yeah, you flex a different muscle and you gain different types of relationships with the people you're serving. Like I know, uh, there's still people that come into our cafe that first met us at the Georgia Tech Farmers Market that were students at the time, um, which is, it's not like that's a huge part of our business is like Georgia Tech students we met on these farmers market oh. days, but um, it is really cool. And uh, to go a step further, we, I don't know if we told this story. Did we tell the trunk or treat story on the show? Yes, we did. Okay. So, in case you don't know, we were we were doing a uh, actually a vending event, right? At we were doing a trunk or treat in a neighborhood, and we were mostly just like selling hot chocolates as opposed to catering. Um, and we met a guy who owned a building in Alpharetta, and he was like, "You know, this cart would be great in this building I have in Alpharetta because we're starting a co working space, and the cart could be in there." And we were like, "Yes," and so. That was our first opportunity is being able to have a daily pop-up in Thrive Coworking, which Thrive, we love you, Ben, Ramon, Grant, all you guys. Thank you. Um, and so and that, like, like we already said, having that daily pop-up in the same city that we would open a cafe in was super-duper beneficial, not only for the guests and the regulars that we accrued throughout that time but also just for us of like learning how to operate a bar daily in our own business and um yeah it was huge huge yeah the the pop-up um i was actually just talking to somebody who wanted to start a coffee cart um newsflash there's many of you out there um that is that is something to make note of is the market it's gonna get saturated eventually, so it's it's nice to see some of them, you know, popping up, in very different locations. Yeah, um, for sure. But yeah, and I was thinking about this advertising thing, thinking about uh, how do you, because this guy wants to try to, and duh, but he wants to like be 
working for his business full time. And I'm like, I don't think you could pull that off in catering if you were if your angle was event catering for probably two one to two years. Right? Would you agree? Yeah. Would you agree? Yeah, especially without a cafe. Yeah. Cause trying to get your name out there and unless you're able to get like a deal. But that's a huge pro of setting up this pop up is that like if you're just if you find the right person or the right space to be able to collab in and put your cart in that you made and operate that every day, you can pretty much for twenty thousand dollars have have your own business and like live off of that. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. Obviously you'll get back into the conversation of permitting and licensing and that really depends on your situation. But um if if you're out there and you're looking to like do your own thing, I would definitely consider that route. But I love what one of you said about the first event of just doing the pour overs is like, if you have this dream, just start taking steps and trying to find opportunities like right now. Cause our whole thing, our whole plan crumbled when we couldn't get into this store that we thought we were going to be able to pop up into. So before you spend the 20 grand, it's not like a monster turnaround time to get a cart going. So you can have conversations and dream and like make a plan with someone or an entity or a business uh, and then pull the trigger, you know, Mm -hmm. you can kind of start putting some bricks down on your path. Um, The last question that we, I don't think you guys, you don't want to say anything about that. I, I don't think so. I mean, I, I think some of what you said is is also a pro for if you like that person wanting to do this full time, whereas we had an end goal. If I was wanting to do it full time, back to what I said about the uh, the the van. the van, because if, especially if you can work it out with whatever city you're in, and you can just be like, I'm gonna be here. I'm gonna drive this thing up to the blank office building every single. Uh, Monday from 8.30 a.m. to whatever. Mm -hmm. Or I'm going to get here at 7 and be here until then. Uh, Because your events, you know, they take place Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So figure out your Monday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And uh, you're you're much more likely to be able to do this thing all the time instead of just as a side hustle. Yeah, that's true. I think when we were trying to balance both, that was a big point, is that even think, going back to what Jonathan said about the 50 brides being interested, the reality is that probably half of those have the same either the same wedding day or the same wedding weekend, and then they you can't do both. True. And ladies and gentlemen, there is almost nothing worse than double booking a wedding on accident. Um, and oh, we've, we have done that a time or two, and having oh, yeah. to uh, contact that bride or groom and say... We are so sorry, but we cannot do your wedding after we said that we could. That's a sting. That's a real, real stinky, stinky situation. Um, it's a second sting reference. Yeah. Lots of sting going on here. And a uh, pro for scheduling, you know, especially when you have three people trying to like make magic happen. Uh, the schedule is king. So we got a question from longtime guest Greg Keelan. He says, how do y'all, love the Southern flair, how do y'all <laughs> deal with problem or difficult customers? Um, now, this is interesting. I guess we could frame this a few different ways. Homeboys, we can say from a catering perspective, sure. the customer would be uh, the, the client yeah. of who's booking us, less so the, the guests in the space. Yeah. And then from a pop-up or cafe perspective the customer would be uh the human getting the coffee dude let let her rip you know yeah i'm trying to think do we want to talk about the time i got into a fight (laughs) of of what not to do (laughs) yeah yeah of what not to do yes Um, yes i do want to talk about that this was and and this goes back to i think what we were talking about when Ross was in the can. 
Um, busted. Yeah, busted. Um, you, we were we were doing a wedding where we probably didn't charge enough. We get there. Uh, nothing that we at, like said in the contract had happened. Like our contract said, like we have to. There has to be a smooth surface for like paved surface for us to unload our cart onto. No stairs. Like all of these miscellaneous things. So we pull up, and there is this this guy who's like already agitated, and he is like. Y'all need to go unload around back. And we were like, okay. We go around back, and then the wedding coordinator comes over to us, and she's like, you guys need to go un- unload around front. So we pull up around front and start unloading onto gravel. We're already crunched for time here. Already too. crunched for time. And then this guy comes up and starts, like, chewing us out for unloading there. And I was basically just like, she told us to do this. Everything we asked for hasn't happened. We're, we're going to unload this cart here. And he was like the owner of the venue and like started like yelling at me and basically saying that he'd make us load up and leave. And I was like, all right, dude. And so we finished unloading and then he came over and apologized later. Uh, you guys hug it day. out? Yeah, we hugged it out. <laughs> he, he really wanted to talk later because he felt bad. Uh, yeah. But anyways... You would think the owner of an event venue would have a little bit more uh, poise. It, yeah. It, it was like really cold and rainy outside, I remember, too. Oh. Yeah. So anyways, that doesn't really have anything to do with the question, but it was just a story. Oh, it's a good story. Stories. I, we all got them. I was thinking about the last event that we ever did. You remember? You The wedding? You, me, yeah. Somsi, mm-hmm. Dahlonega. Yep. Um... And this, I wouldn't say there's, uh, Dylan, if you're listening, this is not a difficult, this is not the difficult or problem customer, but just the difficult circumstance. We went and did a wedding and um, we, you know, what we talked about, we didn't have the power. I tried to, you know, say, hey, this is what we need. We didn't have it. And instead of, you know, getting upset or saying like, Oh well, you know we're not going to do it. We, I, this is all all more of a story too. But we decided to since we had we this is a different situation where we had the cafe going. We had enough money. We were doing this for like someone that we knew. They were in the coffee industry, so we just wanted to make it work. So we said, you know what? Okay, we have one circuit to work on. I.e., we're not going to be able to like brew drip during service. So what we did, and we were trying to warm up our espresso machine in the winter and brew drip beforehand, so we couldn't even do that. So we started um, (laughs) started making a gallon pour-over, basically, with the drip. So we took the gallon kettle and the burner, like the electrical eye, took it inside, got the water boiling, and then, like, made drip on top of it. And... You know, that that's just a testament to, like, do what you got to do. You know, you we could have been self-righteous and said, well, you're not getting drip. Well, you're not getting this then. But we said, you know what? We're going to just, we're, we're going to flex. We're going to do what we can. And we were able to get drip to them and serve enough of that to help us out during the rush of making, like, lattes and espressos. So, yeah, that's that's what I would say. That was one of my stories. And I'm sticking to it. Love it. Um, I think there is something to be said about having a contract. And like I said, you know, we we ran into the same issues over and over and over again. And the solution for us would have been just to get a generator and take things into our own hands. Yeah. Um, And we didn't do that. But if we started again, we probably would. Uh, But I think... With, with all that, if, we're, if you're talking about like a, a problem customer, some of those problems might arise before you even start the event. So like I was saying with me quoting someone $350 and that being out of their budget, fortunately for you, you get to choose where you go. Whereas in a cafe, you might not get to choose as much about a problem guest who walks through the door. Um, but if you see red flags right away, i.e., 
thinking it's expensive for you to spend a whole day of your time and materials for $350, you can just say no to that event and it can end right there. Mm -hmm. I think the last thing I'll say on that is that there's something really powerful about this philosophy we hold to about being the thermostat of the space and being a thermostat of the, the kind of like culture that we're building and the whatever we're putting out. And so a lot of times if we have disgruntled guests at a wedding or even at the cafe, so much is mitigated and just by our, ourselves showcasing love and respect and appreciation, humility, the ability to listen that we probably, you know, quench 95% of any sort of difficulties or problems. And, um, a big part of that is to just check your ego at the door because I think about, at least in the cafe space, when a lot of problems arise or if I'm saying like difficulty, it would be, um, with like a, a drink not being up to spec, you know, or it coming out and saying, oh, I, I wanted this iced. And you say, well, it came in on the order ticket hot, so I made hot. I don't know what you want me to do. But um, being in a team culture and checking our gear at the door, it's just like, yeah, great. Okay, if you want it hot, yep, we're going to make it hot for you right now. I'm sorry about the miscommunication. You just get them what they want. Obviously, there's, there's probably, you know, a, an exception to every rule where someone – isn't going to be pleased and um yeah there's there's some stories i could go into there and that's just where you have to like draw boundaries of what you're willing to accommodate and entertain and anytime anytime a guest starts to really infringe upon the health of the team is when you know the teeth teeth get shown and we're like whoa we prioritize our team more than more than the an angry guest so Team first, baby. We talked about it before, but um, great job. Yeah, I think, you know, just to circle it all back up, if you want some hands-on help, um, partner with Valor. And we can probably, uh, you know, get our hands dirty and plumbing out that uh, that stellar cart Whoa. that we're going to create. Stellar cart. <laughs> nice. Good work, boys. Good radio. Good, Good radio. radio. We answered a lot of questions. I imagine this might be, you know, not the, the last time we talk about this. So no. if you continue to have questions or follow-ups, please uh, just personally text Riley. Text or call. We'll have his number and address in the show notes. <laughs> Go to his house. Yeah, I'm pretty much, you know, there all the time. He's available. Yeah, 24-7. Mm-hmm. Night or day. Uh, yeah, so we would really appreciate it if you would share this on your socials, right? Socials? Yeah. How do you share a podcast? <sighs> Ethan. Every podcast has a link. Oh. Even, you know, Spotify even has, you know, share to your Instagram story and it makes it look all neat and stuff. Um, if you would, cool. If you would share it, give us a review, uh, subscribe on YouTube, comment like don't dislike even if you hate it like it you know yes yeah please uh yeah love you love Love you. you